You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. Hello! Oh, my God, thanks. <laughs> you cued it. I love it. You avoid it. And it's like, oh, right, yeah, we do that. <laughs> it's as if we didn't record two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I say that, I feel like I've got pie on my face, <laughs> like Mrs. Doubtfire when she pops up out of the refrigerator. Hello, and she's covered in cream. <laughs> See, I like your posture, Dave. You look like you're on like Theo Vaughn's podcast right now. Who's it's that? Chill, relax. The comedian. He has like a mullet. Um, ah, younger dude. I don't know him. Oh, I thought you were talking the- about Huxable for a minute. He yeah. had he had Louis C.K. on his show fairly recently, and Louis C.K. was like, "Dude, I never fucking heard of you." And my agent was like, go on a show. Me so, neither. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I listened to one of your albums. Okay, you're fucking good. I'm glad I'm here. Cool. I was like, oh, that's a, and Theo Vaughn was like, holy shit, I just made it. Cool. So, I have to check him out. <laughs> no, he, yeah, he's hilarious. Does he sit like this? He, it's a very, they're all in like laid back chairs, you know, so it's a very relaxed, everyone's comfortable podcast. I'm sitting like this because I switched chairs because that one, the back is covered in mold. So, and this one sits really tall. Mm. So I'm leaning back so that I don't have to, because if I sit up straight in this chair, I feel like a vulture on a, <laughs> like on a on a telephone wire. I wonder. I don't know if I can get a dehumidifier out here or what. Yeah, things tend to get moldy out here. They do get moldy. Mm-hmm. It's hey, moist. Set up, set up a dehumidifier. <laughs> a lot of moisture out here. A lot of moisture. <laughs> it's a regular moisture farm. It's just moisture farm out here. <laughs> You but need this, a, you need a no moisture place. evaporator. This is also com- oh. comfortable. It, you, look comfortable. you look comfortable. It does look good. I got my feet propped up on the mold chair, yeah. <laughs> so I'm still touching it. <laughs> well, these chairs are free from work, so I, I'll just go get more. <laughs> yeah, hey, that's yeah, a great yeah. idea. <laughs> I mean, mold ain't going anywhere. <laughs> so, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not without bleach. Yeah, we should bleach the chair. Bleach it. Have all the bleach stains on it. <laughs> See, if you didn't know, this is Tadpock, Tyler, and Dave, and Ian. Play old games. This week we're talking about a not so a old very game. old game, super old. old game. I remember this game from when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Good old Jaws rom hack. <laughs> Dave the Diver. Yeah, yeah. This ran, I remember I randomly saw it brought in a TikTok, and then when you brought it up, Ian, it was like, okay, yeah. This one got diver. pretty popular for like earlier this year. I feel yeah, like all of a sudden, and it's still highly recommended. I mean, you yeah. know, you go on Reddit. Uh, especially on the R Steam Deck um, subreddit, you'll have a lot of people that'll say, I just got my deck. What are games to recommend? Dave the Diver is always, always, always runs great on, on the list. Deck. It runs really great uh, without burning up a lot of battery power. You can yeah. get <laughs> many hours on one charge with yeah, that game. For real. Going from Baldur's Gate 3 to <laughs> this. <laughs> yeah. Where like Baldur's <laughs> Gate 3, I'd start playing and like two hours in, it's like, uh, uh, homie, you're at ten percent, and I'm like, okay, I'll plug down. it in. Five percent, all right, all right, three percent. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Just all right, it's in, it's in, it's in. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we uh, we did it. We covered Dave the Diver. So uh, we'll talk about that today. Yeah, but before all that, I imagine do we have stuff to talk about? Do we do? We're, Abstained from stuff the other day. We've only had two days since our last recording, so <laughs> yeah. I spent I mean, fifty bucks in Cincinnati on my work trip. Nice. That's, that's all. That's awesome. That's all the money I spent. That's all you need to spend for four days. Damn. And I'm not. I'm not going to ask you to tell me how much you were allocated. More than fifty. More than fifty. <laughs> <laughs> There's a Tim Robbins uh, sketch that's like um, this guy who doesn't. He he goes on a work trip and he doesn't spend any of his per diem. He doesn't eat anything because he falls in love with these shirts from this these very expensive shirts uh-huh. from the store and he just spends his per diem on that. <laughs> I felt a little bit like that guy because I um I did eat, but what I did was when I got to Cincinnati, I was like, man, I'm gonna Instacart some deli turkey and some bagels, and I'm gonna live off of that for four days. Boy and dinner. And yeah, boy dinner. <laughs> and it was, uh, I mean, I eat a lot of that anyway. I was missing it. 
so it was nice. I wish I could get the the Oikos yogurt because I eat a lot of that mm-hmm. too, but I couldn't get it anywhere. So, yeah. but yeah, it was good. And frugal, very frugal. And what's nice about when I go on those trips, um, breakfast and lunch is provided. So all I got to do is cover dinner. So which can easily be done bagel. with turkey yeah, and bagel. That's pretty good. Yeah. Any condiments or just turkey and bagel? Uh, I got some. I splurged on the pickles. I got mm. the. Uh, oh my god! I can't remember the good pickles. Wickles. No, I don't. I, to be honest with you, man. Yeah. I don't like Wickles that much. I don't get them anymore because of their sugar content. Oh, is that what's like, up? I like, I like my... Because, I mean, I think Wickles are delicious, but they have quite a bit of sugar in them. So if I'm, if I'm eating pickle, it's always extra. I don't want the calories for a pickle. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's like a big mm-hmm. draw of a pickle. I, I mean, I like them anyway, but, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. Go to Jimmy John's, fuck the chips, I'm getting the pickle, even though it feels like a rip. Yeah. It's a big pickle. It's, it's a, a big it's a, pickle. It's a big pickle, but it's like, is it like a... I don't, I don't care. Two about two dollar pickle. Mm. It's yeah. a lot yeah. of pickle. It's too much pickle for me. <laughs> I like so a little spear. <laughs> I like a little spear from time to time. Yeah, but yeah. the whole pickle, I just can't take it. A lot of ladies prefer prefer the, too the spear. <laughs> what's yeah. the what's the little pickle? A smedium. A gir- gherkin. A gherkin. <laughs> <laughs> a smedium. Uh, but no, the oh snap. Pickles that you oh, usually eat as like a snack. Yeah, yeah, I was like, yeah. "Fuck like it, man!" Super putting, I'm, cri- yeah, unbelievable. I'm gonna crisp. put these on a sandwich. I've never splurged like that before, because I knew if I bought a big jar, I'm not tr- bringing that back home. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did bring leftover bagels home, and I ate all the turkey. And I want to thank you, Ian, because you have turned me back on big time to pork rinds. I'd kind of, uh, I'd kind of been like, ah, I'm not going to do pork rinds because I just kind of assumed that the macros on them are horrible. Nope. No. They're not. They're, they're really, great. They're really, they're really good. great. I can't have them every day. Because so. my pre-diabetic, you know, have an ass, I go, I've gone back to pork rinds instead of chips. No carbs. So, yep. Low right. calories. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, crunchy and tasty and got delicious. a little bit of protein in there. And a little bit of protein. So about It's not, that. it's like six grams per serving. Which is, or maybe more, which even. Which is pretty decent. That's not when bad. You, when, when you consider how much protein you get from a bag of fucking Doritos, right, it's, exactly. it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I need that six grams. Now, there is there is some cholesterol involved there, obviously, because it is a pork product. Sure. But if you're like me... It's and not hydrogenated, a, it, so... Yeah. If, if you're like me and you're on a statin, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because you have medicine to counteract the cholesterol. But no, I'm, I'm with you. I rarely eat regular chips anymore and we, we stumbled across it because found out it was one of those things that tanya can eat with her condition oh, yeah. she she can have an easier time eating it but she gets a lot of protein from it which she it's difficult for her to get just through normal eating just because she, she wouldn't get those from things. chips right yeah, yeah. and she'll it's, so she'll eat pork it's cheaper rinds. And it's cheaper they're than cheap. fucking chips. Because right. man, I yeah. went and bought two dollars and fifty cents for a big bag yeah. of pork rinds. I say I went because I, I there, there's this buffalo chicken dip the girls wanted, so I made I made it, and then I was like, oh, I'll grab some tortilla chips with it. Yeah, six dollars a bag yeah. for the chips for for, tortilla, for Tostitos, for Tostitos brand. brand. Holy chips. God, chips. were these what sizes were these? Like a garbage the, bag full? Re- regular size. <laughs> like what's a regular size? Like, like a party size bag? Not a party size bag. Regular regular Smaller standard than that? size wow. bag. Fuck $6. that noise! I know they're. I, high. I downgraded to the the you know regular. It wasn't store brand, but off brand was like two for six dollars. Dude, I like those mission chips. Mission so, makes some good chips good too. Yeah, I like the mission chips. They're not bad, and they're usually pretty cheap. So My favorite right. is the thin and crispy, but those are those are expensive. Thin and crispy, thin and crispy is good. But yeah, I mean, I've really and. My, I'm all about the, like those salt vinegar pork rinds. They have some salt vinegar pork mm. rinds that you can get at Walmart. And they're usually like really heavily coated with the salt vinegar, and I'm I'm about it, man. I love I love that shit. But See, yeah, but a big jar, a jug of pork rinds, like a big plastic jug, is and I don't know what the weight of it's a lot of them, but it's it's only like three bucks. Yeah, so and I they mean, last. It's weird that two they're weeks. way cheaper. Yeah, it's probably because I guess it's otherwise considered waste. It's a byproduct. I mean, I is my yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, it's a byproduct. Maybe that. Maybe that's it. And they're I mean, making a. They're making a fortune on it because they already have it. They're not having to produce it. They just have to fry it. Right. You know, 
I wonder if we can find a good air fried pork rind. Yeah, maybe. Get back on that cholesterol. I don't know how well, it works. I'm, I'm going to look into that. But I don't have a problem with the cholesterol, so I'm I'm typically pretty good on that. Yeah. It's this, it's sodium, but that's not just mm-hmm. pork rinds. That's, yeah, it's in everything. I mean, my I'm like especially salt vinegar pork rinds. Right, right. <laughs> that's what made me sodium. think of the sodium. You mentioning that? Yeah. I was like, fuck, man. I bet that's really good. And then it's like, oh yeah, I'm already like two thousand milligrams over in sodium every day. <laughs> yeah, I so, eat too much salt for sure. I but can't good, control it, man. I mean, I don't know. Good shit though. I'm glad. Yeah. You you gave that some. Consideration because yeah, I love those. I'm glad you things. brought them up. I like the uh, happy to help baconettes. That's yeah. my that's my yep. brand. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The ones like we spicy. get are just the ones that they have at Walmart. Whatever they are, I don't even know the it's name. Like a brand. Max a value brand or Max. I think M A C S Max. I think is the name of them. If I'm not mistaken. That Bucky's bag we had the other day might have been some of the best. Yeah, texture actually, of those were awesome. They were perfectly Boosies. fried. Boosies. 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 <laughs> Boosies. I saw that TikTok. <laughs> What's you ever heard at Bussies? <laughs> well, we talked about uh, part two of our Marvel draft series with villains. Yeah, we did Heroes last week. So yep. if this is your first episode of Tadpog. Don't let it be. Go Sorry. back to the other one. <laughs> I <laughs> did have... the first hour of the previous one. Right. I did have one, a couple of little things I oh, wanted yeah, yeah, to please. bring up. First of all, I've been watching ZOM 100. Do you like it? Bucket List of the Dead. Yeah, I'm week to week now. I can't get enough. I love it. Are they dubbing it week to week? Or are you uh, uh, watching it? So far, they, oh, I am watching that one subbed. Cool. That's rare for you. You must really like it. I do really like it, and I'm t- I'm running out of shit to watch, th- yeah. and I want to watch it. So I went ahead, and I've been watching it subbed, and I've been watching um, Psychopaths. Man, I've been really curious about that. So one. far, I've only gotten about one or two episodes in, yeah. um, and it's really good so far. It's basically Minority Report. You okay. Know? It, it's like oh, it's yeah. like human thought is quantifiable, and they can scan your mind to see where your emotional state is and if you get to a certain number you have to be taken in for therapy um it's not necessarily like a pre-crime thing like minority report it's more of a you're gonna go crazy kind of thing and we're gonna catch you and try to rehabilitate you beforehand um and what's really neat about psychopaths is they have these guns that are called dominators and the dominators are these AI controlled pistols that are enormous that can read they will only fire at people at a uh, that are at a certain psychopath level and it depending on the severity of their psychopath level it could be a lethal kill a lethal hit or just a stun gotcha and it will it will uh, inform whoever they point the gun whoever's pointing the gun will be informed at to, as to their psychopath level and the trigger will unlock. And so then it's up to them to decide whether or not to pull the trigger. But you can't just take the gun and point it at anyone and fire it. Because it'll lock. Because it'll lock if the trigger. Not, um, okay. it basically, the, it takes, it's a very futuristic show um, and it follows this one new psychopath. Um, there's a division that polices it and inside the division they've got actual like criminals that are serving as investigators and and they call them enforcers. So they go alongside the detectives to um, stop people and to catch psychopaths. Hell's Paradise style. It's it's Hell's Paradise style, yeah. And uh, it follows this one new recruit who scored really highly on her aptitude tests um, to to be in this department. Um, but is having some co- conflict with how the punishment is meted out and who gets punished. F- and, you know, so anyway, like I said, I've only gotten about two episodes in, but I've enjoyed it so far. It's on Country Roll. And right now, as far as I can tell, the whole thing is, is dubbed. So um, I, do, I do recommend it to anyone interested. How in, many episodes does it have? So far, or I don't is it, know. Is it ra- I just it's I not don't wrapped, know. is it? I mean, no, I think it just came out yeah. recently. I, I I've heard of it. Country Roll was like promoting it really heavily. I think it's like this year it came out. Okay. I just haven't. I don't ever dig into that far. I just start watching something that looks interesting. But um, 
so yeah, I'd give that a shot. And then, of course, Only Murders in the Building. I've been watching that guy, that show. Yeah, we picked um, that up again. this season, and this season is turning out to be. You're watching I, three. I'm watching season three. Okay, I'm almost done with two. I have not. I have always chuckled at Only Murders in the Building. Yeah, and it is a it's a funny show, and it's got a great story. It's that murder mystery kind of thing. I really dig it. So the episode I watched for this week, yesterday, I was laughing out loud at it. It was that funny. I, it was classic Steve Martin. Cool. Uh, Martin Short and Steve Martin's timing Dude. is impeccable throughout this entire series. I, hey, forty more years of working show. together and we'll get there. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's only a matter of time. But I really dig it. And season three is definitely not disappointing. And then, so the last thing I wanted to bring up is because I think I've mentioned before on the show that how how much ASMR bothers me. Oh, you and Melissa both. Okay. What don't you like about it? Well. See, it was it was. I think it's who's doing it. If it's the if the wrong person is doing it, or if they're making annoying noises. So what what would be the who would be the wrong person, and what would be the wrong noises? I don't know. It would be like if I saw. I can't tell you an example of one that I didn't like. It's just that I've seen it here Trump and there. Eating cereal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't like the sound of eating. That's mukbang. It's like, entirely different. <laughs> I don't. I don't care for the sound of eating. I don't like this like repetitive noises, like phones ringing that no one will answer. Oh God, or, that does sound awful. <laughs> you know, things of that yeah. nature really, really bother me. They're super triggering for me, and I, I just, I don't know why, but it's always been a problem. What do you sleep to? Do you sleep to anything? Does it have to be silent, she or do you puts like on? We've got one of those sound machines. It sounds like rain. So rain, you're okay with. Is yeah. There, well, so okay. Is there enough variety in rain? She she's got this thing on her iPad that ha, she can like put what she wants to add to it. Mm. So it's not it's a storm, and then she says, "I want it to have thunder," and I want, occasionally, mm -hmm. and I, you know, she can like add stuff, and that doesn't bother me. That kind of thing doesn't bother me, but I hadn't really given it much of a chance, like. The stuff that I had seen irritated the shit out of me because it was people trying to be edgy and mean about it. I uh, found one that I... I've, turns out I do like ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was on YouTube the other day, and this one channel came up called Latte ASMR. This is Japanese woman who has been doing this for several years. I mean... Some of her oldest videos go back to seven fucking years ago. I mean, she's been at it for a minute. She's a very passionate about it. And when she first started, she, it was Japanese language. So she would speak in Japanese, but she does these little role plays, and it's like makeup. It's like she's putting on your makeup, or she's brushing your hair, or giving you a haircut, or she's doing like conversation, ear stuff cleaning while she's doing and it stuff. Or? Yeah, she yeah. just sort of talks and does the little sounds with her hands, and you can hear her hands kind of going yeah. like this, and all this is kind of stuff. Is it the ASMR you like, or is it the connection? What do you mean? If she's being nice and doing the things like she's doing the like you're having Both. a conversation, yeah, it's the it's the idea that I would be really cool if someone would like touch my face and whisper in my <laughs> ear and stuff. Only not, it's not a sexual thing at all. It's just, it's very soothing. I have at a Tadpock prom. Everybody come to Ian and nope. his face. <laughs> 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 not without my consent. Not without my consent. I I'm one of the I I I. I I cannot. So I, maybe it's because of the channels that I frequent and 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 flow through. But I mean, I can't. I can't separate ASMR from anything but sexual. Okay, I thought that might be a problem too. Because for one thing, she is super pretty. Yeah, and but it's not. And maybe it is, in a way, sexual. But not like I don't watch it because it's sexual. Right. No, sure. It's just. I'm not saying this is a you thing. Yeah, no. It's a me problem. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. It's fine. I understand. But I've the seen... thing is, I've never understood 
it is I guess it's just the way she does it. Yeah. Because of course, of course I don't know what it's like to have someone put makeup on me and stuff. We could find out. We could find out. Um, but it was neat because like if I'm it's very calming. And I've been I've been having this going in the background at work. When I'm super stressed and I'm I can't think and I can't concentrate, I will turn on one of her videos. And at first, I was listening to her early videos, which, again, were in Japanese. And I do not right. speak Japanese, but I love the sound of the Japanese language, mm. especially when it's being whispered to me while a woman is okay. in, she's whispering in this ear, and then she'll go over to this ear and stuff. But I also... I have. It was weird too because she'll like act like she, she'll like do her hands up by the camera, like she's rubbing like with a brush, like she'll like she's rubbing your face with a brush yeah. or like brushing your cheek or something. And it's so strange because like I'll feel a tingle on my face. See, because of the way she's doing it, it's it's yeah. making my brain right, right. expect that sensation. I think that's awesome because I. I there's we have these webinars for work and some of them are like wellness webinars uh -huh. and one of them was talking about um it wasn't all about asmr but it was like a small segment sure and you know the the therapist is talking about how um some people feel tingling sensation i get that and i'm jealous because i've never i've listened to a lot and there are certain things that i like like you know earlier i was a lot of the voice stuff is sexual to me but what there's some, i don't know if this is asmr or not i love in food videos where they've got a really good they've got like the cutting board mic'd up really yeah. well yeah, and yeah, you yeah. can hear the shh, shh, i love that so, i don't get tingly or anything but like that sound is yeah, so like soothing yeah well is, she will soothing. do the now she Apparently, she has been getting better and better and better at speaking English over the years and has now is doing most of her videos in English. And shit, I actually gave her five bucks and subscribed to her channel so I could unlock more videos because there's there's a hundred of them. I mean, she's just been working. But she does this thing where she'll like pick up a bottle of like, I don't know, fucking witch hazel or, or makeup or something, and she'll tap her fingernails on the bottle yeah. and, and move it from side to side. And, you know, it's a really nice, it's just a really nice sensation. Do it's you have very your soothing. On? That's what I was going to say next. The good question. thing, mm -hmm. it is a good question because the thing that works for me, and I think what it is, I have a pair of AirPods Pro, which are noise canceling. And they, oh, so the noise canceling of the AirPods Pro is spectacular. When you click that noise cancel feature on, it seals to your ear and you can't hear fuck all. I mean, you can, but it's like mostly what you hear is what's coming out of the headphones. That is when I get the tingles in my face and mm. the shivers from feeling like someone is literally talking into my ear real softly because that's all I can hear. It's like when she moves her face over to the mic on this side of the screen, it's mixed properly so that what she does here goes in my left ear, what right, she does sure. here with my right, you know, it's stereo. Yeah, yeah. But that's what does the trick. And the other day, we went to eat lunch. I went to eat lunch with Captain Gun Nerd, John Turley, and our friend Jillian. And we ate at this Mexican place, and for some reason, it did not agree with me. A few hours later, I was my stomach was so upset, and I was miserable. And I thought, I wonder. And I turned that on, and within 15 minutes, I was feeling better. It, it I don't know what the effect is. I don't know what chemicals my body released but mm. my stomach just stopped bothering me i felt better i felt calmer and it was like this is this is my new favorite thing it has just become my happy place to to sit and listen to this woman do her thing and i don't know what it is but i i felt like it was important that i mention it and completely yeah. recant my stance from before about how much ASMR bothers me because I, I found that. some that I really 
I get it now. Yeah. It's not going to be for everyone, and not every ASMR is going to be for me, but this one was really neat. And I want to make sure that we say the name again. It's Latte, L A T T E A S M R, uh, on YouTube. I, I've got it written down for the show notes. I, I would highly, just very much like for you guys to go check out her stuff. Like and subscribe, all that good thing. And if you're really into it, give her a couple of bucks because she works very hard. She deserves it. And I wanted to give her a really big shout out because it's it's actually one of those things that it is rare in my life that actually makes a big difference in the way I feel. Is that like a is it like a Patreon thing? The five bucks? No, you can subscribe through YouTube now. Oh, I didn't uh, know that. This is so a new thing? It, it'll go through like Google or whatever. So if you're signed into your account, yeah, uh, there's a subscribe. There's a there's a we have that on our YouTube subscribe. channel. I just need to finish setting it up. Okay, then you say join. It's a join button, and she has tiers set up, and you can give you hit join, and it'll say five dollars, and you say sure. It's reoccurring, just like Patreon. Yeah. Uh, but it neat. It gives you access to all of her gated content. That's also hosted on YouTube. It's also hosted on YouTube. It's cool. all all on that. the same platform. It's very convenient, so it could be a bad thing. You I got to be easy careful. To spend that money. I'm at, yeah, I'm gonna have to call my dad and be like, "Hey, man, you asked me a very cute and quaint question last week. Where if you hit the subscribe button on YouTube, do you have to give the person money?" And I said, no, of course not. But now I need to call him. It's, like, don't, it's hit, join. don't hit don't join. Don't hit join. Yeah. join. <laughs> right. yeah. Unless, now, it'll prompt you 17 times to make sure that you really want to do it. Yeah. It's, it's pretty easy to fuck or hard to fuck that up. But the thing I want to make sure to point out, though, is a good set of headphones, preferably noise-canceling headphones, if you can do it, going to make that experience a whole lot better. Um, so anyway, that's that's what I wanted to bring up and make sure um, I got out there because it's rare that I run into something that I want to show support for mm-hmm. and I want to make sure in my limited platform of our show that we get that out there so other people can enjoy her yeah. as well. Well, the cool. way you say about the face tingling, 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 call it the tingling. R- remind reminded me of a TikTok I saw where they they doing an experiment where they had the guy put his arm like over a fence so I've he couldn't this. see his arm, yeah, and then put yes, the same sleeve, the too. fake arm, and then trick him into feeling the things they do to that yeah. fake arm, and then hit it with a hammer. I I saw hit it with a hammer and he freaks <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah, for neurological stuff. Yeah, yeah so talking about like why it works and all yeah. that. But so that when you said a, your face sort of yeah. tingling, just let me think of it. That so. is a visual component because if I have to minimize the window to turn around and do some work, yeah, I don't get that. Now, some of the sounds she makes might make me get a little shiver uh-huh. or a chill just because it wasn't expected and it's it's an aural sensation. But the the thing with the face tingling, I have to be actually watching the video. And she do something like that, and then I feel it, and it's it it's just it's the strangest thing, but it works really it works wonders for cool. me. Cool. So, I'm glad you brought up um, only murders in the building because uh, Steve Martin and Martin Short were just recently on Conan's podcast. Oh yeah, uh, and it made me think. It was funny because we were talking about Conan O'Brien needs a friend. Uh-huh. Uh huh. A couple of weeks ago, a couple episodes. Yeah, ago, yeah, and. Um, Henry started listening to it oh, did on his he? own. We we had watched we okay. watched clips together on YouTube, but there was I was he went to bed one night and I was in the in the bathroom and I was like, it was real quiet, and I heard voices and I was like, where's that coming from? And then I realized it was coming from his room. I was like, is he watching YouTube? He's supposed to be asleep. And I walked in and he was Conan's podcast was playing. And Henry was sleeping, and I was like, "Okay, I'll turn this off." And I asked Nikki. I said, "Did you know he was listening to podcasts?" And she's like, "Yeah, he's been putting on Conan's podcast uh, the last couple nights uh, before bed." Uh, I just thought it was cool. I love that. Mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. And for a minute, I was like, "Is that appropriate?" It's like, "Yeah, most of it is." I mean, he there's way less appropriate things uh, out there, but I just thought it was cool that he went out of his way to like find it. On Spotify. Yeah. And yeah. No, listening. I think that is really neat. Yeah. You could do a lot worse than Conan O'Brien. Uh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> He's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah. 
I need to start listening to that it's show. A, it's a great show. Yeah, it's a fantastic show. In, in, in the majority, I hate celebrities having podcasts. But Same. I'm on board with Conan, like having having a medium where it's like you can do whatever the fuck you want, right? You know, because I feel like that's always been stumbling block for Conan because he's funniest when they let him do what he wants. But I feel like the suits always, yeah, they keep him keep keep him on a leash. Keep him, the man keeps him down. Yeah, the podcast is great, and yeah, I mean they do get to do a lot of stuff, and I agree with you, man. I, there are a lot of celebrity podcasts that. I'll listen to for a little bit and then just kind of, mm-hmm. kind of fall off. Um, so it was with what senseless, Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and oh, I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah. I'm sorry, who else was I cut you off? <sighs> From Will and Grace. Um, oh, it was Jack and Will and Grace. Yeah. Oh. Oh. oh shit. God. Yeah. Just Jack. Uh, can't remember. Can't I know remember. you're talking. It's always going to be Jack to me. I can't <laughs> yeah. remember his name either. Sean Hayes. Yeah. That's it. Nice. There you go. So we're turning around to that because the McElroys are talking about them because they win the Addy every year. Uh, Whenever Mac- the McElroys get nominated, but always lose to the Senseless or whatever it's called, and they gotcha. were talking about it. I checked it out. It was the episodes were funny, and then I just I don't know, I don't, yeah yeah they they can overcome plenty of barriers to entry. This is not one they need, even if it's funny. <laughs> so. Yeah, there is a little bit of I don't know. It is weird because it's kind of like for me, a lot of it is spite. <laughs> because it's like oh. you guys could you could do anything, you you're all you could do TV. Like I don't know, man. This, I get it. This is a medium that was like you're already a celebrity. Right. Live, give us a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah somebody, exactly. Get out of the way. Right. Lots of feel about TikToks too. <laughs> like I, that's why I like TikTok steers to new creators and people who aren't famous. And you know, are so. there a lot of celebrities on TikTok? More, but really? I, yeah. I end up I steering free. Their, the algorithm kind of bends me away from a lot of their content. Right. I like that. Sure. So that's where it you know steers you away from it. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of one of the things. Like, I mean, I know podcasting's changed a lot because yeah. it's been around for a while. But, like, to me, a podcast is kind of just regular people. Mm-hmm. You know what I, I get mean? It. And I think, too, also, I want to just add a little bit of my own sort of flavor into that I, I would have no problem with someone who made it big as a podcaster oh sure continuing yeah. to be a podcaster right, right, yeah. it's like but when you're a tv and movie star and everything else and you're like hey eh, let's do a podcast we'll make millions of dollars on it because everyone already knows us because right, we have a brand because right? we have a brand yeah, yeah. and i think that's i agree with you on that for sure i mean i guess more power too um yeah and, it's nothing and i, mean, I don't think there's anything I, wrong with it it's just usually not my yeah. Cup of tea, but Conan definitely an Conan, exception. I think, yeah, I think he's an exception, and I think a lot of it's just because he's so talented. Yep. He is so fucking smart. He's not I love just all a his celebrity. spots on 30, 30 yeah. Rock. Yeah, yes, <laughs> yeah. He's not just a celebrity. He's like a comedic genius. I mean, truly, he really is. That's no exaggeration. So it's always fun just to see what he's what he's doing. And I agree with you. Even when he had you know his shows, it always felt like. His show was always like the most creative. Yeah, it's not made. He's not a mainstream sort of comic, and that's what yeah. they wanted for the Tonight Show well, he was the and edge, shit like man. that. Yeah. He was the edge, and I mean, he's he's the reason you laughed at the Simpsons for the first ten years it was on the air. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, that was just that's why his brand of comedy hits so well. And oh god, all his shit with Jordan Schlansky or whatever his yes. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah, I love this stuff with Jordan. It's <laughs> it's great. <laughs> when he takes him to the Olive Garden, fuck know. me. Yeah, I like all the stuff with Sona too. Uh, <laughs> and she's on the she's on the regular podcast. Uh, she was his assistant, um, and uh, yeah, she's she's fantastic. She's really funny. She's a good. They have a good back and forth. Yeah. I'm going to pick that one up. I just keep forgetting to do it. And for some reason, excuse me, I'm eating candy. <laughs> it's good ASMR. <laughs> for some reason, I've like got it in my head that I am going Ian to John? get. I am going to eat. Uh, eat. I am going to finish last podcast on the left. I'm going to get current. Yeah. Whew, that is an endeavor. I've made it pretty far. I've made it into about, it's going to take a while. Yeah. 
I love. I think I I'm love at like them. episode two hundred and fifty. Everything but the aliens. I fucking love the shit and out I've, of their stuff. I've I've just, gotten, I'm just not an alien. It's like me and the X Files. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every not alien episode, I'm like, yeah. fuck yeah. I've gotten <laughs> I've gotten good enough, if you will, at listening to last podcast to know immediately if this is an episode I'm not going to want to hear mm. and just mm-hmm. skip to the next one. Yeah. Um, but they're really good, and they still. I, Zabrowski makes me. I've got yeah. Henry Zabrowski laugh. is fucking amazing. That dude. But they, is, they need each. They need each other. They do need each other. Because I don't like. I like. I listen to side stories. I like side stories. But when you take Marcus out of the equation, it feels like the floor is just falling out from under it. Oh yeah, like, for sure. They and they do a really. They make a concerted effort to make sure it stays on track and it stays mm-hmm. on point because it it can derail, but. God, Zabrowski makes me fucking laugh God, out loud it. frequently. And I don't I don't mean it's like I don't mean to. You know, it literally catches me by right. surprise how funny his shit can be. And I will be in the car and I will just I, I have had to I have been to the point of having almost having to pull over <laughs> because he gets me tickled so much. Yeah. You know, I, I got Eden, like a Japanese serial killer. Yeah. He does that voice. God, God damn it. <laughs> that was actually it, the is one. it racist? No. Listen to Charles Ng. Listen to him it's talk. Not being racist. <laughs> this is the way he sounds. Actually, Tyler, that <laughs> might have been the one I was just so referring good. to. It's so good. I was laughing so hard <laughs> in the car and I'm like, this is unsafe. I need to pull over. I'm gonna have a wreck. I'm gonna hurt somebody. Finally managed to get myself under control, but I do think you're right. Yeah. I think it was <laughs> the Charles Ng stuff. And we're only one degree of separation going. from Zabrowski because he follows Jacob. They work together on that on your pretty face. Oh, okay, oh, yeah. Yeah. all right. I, I didn't know, know that. that. Yeah, I did not know that because I'll see Jacob on Twitter and Henry comments on his shit. So. Okay, it's well, pretty good. Jacob, yep. tell Henry Zabrowski <laughs> I think he's funny. All right, so. We're 41 minutes in. Marvel Villains. Would you like to do some Marvel Villains? I didn't even ask what we were doing. Let's do what? Me, one and two, Ian, three and four, Dave, five and six. Okay. You don't like that first roll, huh? <laughs> well, I, I rolled it, then I was like, I don't even ask anybody any numbers. <laughs> I, did not, I don't even pay attention. I don't know if it stays the same each week or not. Three, Ian. All right, I'm not going to be as strong on the villains as I am on the heroes, because um, there's less of them. Because there's the less universe. of them, and I'm always I I tend to just not pay as much attention to the villains as I probably should. Magneto, that's my number one. God, there you go. <laughs> I gotta God, I gotta grab damn it. Damn it! They do a good job with Magneto, like his backstory and everything. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. it really is. Yeah. I mean, that's like super. It's relevant. You get where he's coming from. <laughs> yeah, you know what you I mean. Do. I it's feel like, like with with Magneto, you really get where he's coming from. Yeah. But it's like, man. <laughs> I mean, I when mean, you're a child, you have side with Professor X and hate Magneto. As a man, it's the other way around. <laughs> uh, then my first has to be Doom, Victor Von Doom. Nice. Yeah, Doom's a big one, especially like. Obviously, not so much in the movies, but like in the comics. Yeah, like definitely in the comics. Was, yeah, huge deal. Dave, uh, I'm going off the top of my head, so these are probably going to be pretty awful. Uh, Magneto was going to be a first pick for me for yep. sure. Me too. <laughs> um, so I came into this being like, "All right, I'm going to grab Magneto first. I'm going to figure the rest out as I go." Um, Same. <laughs> it's all in the roll of the dice. Um, I'll go with Galactus. I'll go, yeah, yeah, the Devourer of Worlds. I mean, I also feel like he hasn't had a really good presence in the movies. I mean, he was a cloud. He was some ships, <laughs> sort of. <laughs> but, I mean, Galactus, pretty yeah. big deal. Yeah. <laughs> and I was glad what in or it's Capcom 3 that he was the, the final boss. Yeah. That, was, that was really well done. I like yeah. that. Ian, number two. Uh, my number two, my grandson is texting me about problems he's having with Roblox. Oh, apparently shit. I'm the only one in the family who knows anything about computers. Anyway, sorry. Um, I told him, sorry, buddy, I'm busy. Now I've talked about him on the show. Um 
my number two is gonna have to be um, Green Goblin. It's a great, mm-hmm. it's a great pick. I like his, I like his whole deal too. Yeah, especially the way he's portrayed in the movies. I think um, Willem Dafoe mm-hmm. is Green Goblin for me. Uh, it's, it's such a cool, it's a great story, and Green Goblin is a fucking dick. Yeah. I mean, like. That dude is like, honestly, he ranks up there for me just because he's so fucking evil. But it's that Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde thing. You've got his right. alter ego. Um, Osborne. Osborne, thank you. Uh, you know, who, who, who doesn't generally recall uh, being in Green Goblin form, yep. you know, and he goes out and it wrecks, wreaks havoc and kills and murders and blows shit up and tries to kill yep. Spider Man. And you got the complication yeah, with his son with the, being, being friends with Peter, the, the drama and, of yeah, him being nice. in there, and mm-hmm. yeah, it's really a really excellent, uh, excellent story for him. So yeah, Green Goblin's yeah, my man. guy. I'll do another heavy hitter and claim Thanos. Thanos, yeah, Thanos is a good one. Man, though, I just don't. Thanos, at least as far now again, I didn't read the comics like I like you guys probably did, but I, I just thought Thanos was un, unnecessarily overpowered. Like even without the Infinity Stones, he was basically unstoppable. Yeah, as a Titan, yeah, yeah as a Titan, and I get it. I mean, I know that's the whole. That's the thing. He's. He wouldn't be much of a, you know, universe destroyer if he were just some dude like me, right? Yeah. And obviously we're not picking up infinity stones and yet wielding them all. Still time for long. <laughs> I mean, just ask Tony Stark how long <laughs> I, how long that lasts, right? But I just thought I don't know, Thanos is bothers me because of that. But I think that's what makes him a good villain. I mean he's a good he's a great villain. It's just he's just a little too a little too much for my taste. Dave, number two. Um, I have to say, true to my middle school self, I got to go with Carnage. Carnage even, is on my list to pick. Even yeah. though I know, uh, in hindsight, incredibly shallow villain. Um, Carnage is one of those where I feel like he probably shouldn't have come back. Like, Carnage, I think, would have been a cool, like, one off where it's like, mm. would have been a cool arc. And then, I don't know, because it's just like the the concept of like, what if a serial, what if a symbiote bonded with a serial killer? That's a cool idea. But it's like, he's so one note that, you know, there isn't a lot of depth there. Like with Venom, there's a lot of like, there's depth, like, you know, because there's a lot of like, because Venom's or Eddie's not a serial killer. He's just a kind of a dick, you know? And it's like, but with, with Cassidy, it's just kind of like, man, he just likes to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what he does. But man, oh, big fan of Carnage in middle school. Huge fan. Oh of god, that middle first. School. I remember just reading that. Uh, Max, me run the last episode of Maximum Carnage just over and over and over. Whenever like Carnage is having that breakdown in that abandoned house, and Venom just going in and just wrecking his shit. Yeah, until he snaps out of it, and then Carnage. Beat the shit out of him. Yeah. But, that was... Man. Yeah. That... Carnage was great because it was like, I already love Venom, but it's... But, you know, it's that, like, power creep where it's mm. like, okay, we took Venom, but now <laughs> he's completely <laughs> fucking nuts. <laughs> Ian, number three. Um, Let's see. Ronan. I liked Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes. I thought, like, out of the movies, he's, I know, we talked about this last week, Killmonger is probably my favorite villain, but Ronan is, like, really, really close. Ronan's a dick. Ronan he's is a like, dick. He's and scary. Like, he's scary. Yeah. yeah he's effective yeah. as a villain. Uh, and I also like the way they kind of shut him down at the end of Guardians, you know? Yeah. I'm distracting you, you big turd nugget, or whatever. <laughs> I just, right. But I like... It's weird. I like the guy that plays him a lot. I think he's very effective. And he's also in that show Foundation that I mentioned. He plays a role in that. Um, it's on Apple TV Plus. I don't know oh, if I yeah. mentioned it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that now. He's a, he's one of the main characters in that. 
as well. And it was nice to see him working yeah. uh, outside of, you know. Was he in his makeup? <laughs> no, he looked like a normal dude. It took me a minute to figure out who it was. I was about to say, he man, wasn't blue. I wouldn't you know. know. He wasn't like a I super Cree or whatever the fuck they are. But yeah, no, he he he's a good dude. So Ronan is my guy uh, for number three. Cool. Uh, for number three, I'll go with my favorite villain as a kid. Uh, I loved the the struggle back and forth. So I'll go Dark Phoenix for number three. Yeah, Dark Phoenix is a good one. Um, I'll go with Apocalypse. Yep. Yep. Age of Apocalypse is one of my favorite. Like. Alternate, alternate realities that Marvel did. Mm-hmm. God, I love that Age of Apocalypse series so much. It was such a cool. I guess it was like the first time ever w- that I had experienced it as a kid, where it's like, oh man, for like I think four months, all of the books are going into this like alternate timeline uh, that show like how the world is when Apocalypse like takes over the. Over the world, I, I thought that was really, really mm-hmm. cool. Um, man, those books were so good. I'm not, man. I haven't and I haven't read all of them <laughs> either. There's a bunch of them, but yeah, it's from really cool stuff. Ian, number four. Thank you, Truncate Silence. I am. My grandson is distracting the hell out of me, so I'm not <laughs> able to uh, get. My thoughts together, I have told him in no, not so many words, leave me the <laughs> fuck alone right now. I didn't say that to him, but I'm like, Cohen, I told you I'm very busy right now. You're going to have to get help from someone else. Can I tell you that when I was in Cincinnati, in the middle of all of it, like the m- middle of the meeting, I'm trying to like sort shit out. Henry's texted me, hey, I want to buy War Thunder <laughs> and it's like it's like no. fine send the request because i have to approve it you uh-huh. know because we've got it gated and he sends it i'm like so i'm working and i see it come through and i approve it and i'm working i get a text it didn't work and it's like okay and i look at it like <laughs> it went through and i took a screenshot and sent it to him and i go back to work yeah but it won't let me spend it and i'm like Man, can you please? Not now. No. Not now. Not please. now, dude. And I'm like, I know you're frustrated. I know that you are, but I can't. I can't right now, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they just don't know how to leave you the fuck alone, I guess. Um, I'm going to go with Agatha nice, from WandaVision. Nice. And not just WandaVision, but as far as I know, Agatha from One Division. What a great twist that was to that show. I love that they had a whole theme based around her. And there's a show coming out mm-hmm. apparently with her in it. Um, Catherine Hahn is the one that plays Agatha. Oh, she's great. Catherine Hahn. How Holy do you, shit. How oh, she's she's not love it, right? Yeah. Agatha. She's like Parks and Rec. It's just, mm-hmm. fuck, she's so good yeah. at Parks and Rec. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good shit. Uh, from before, I will take Kingpin. Ooh, good one. He was on my he was on my short list for sure. Yeah, I, knew I was gonna try to draft him fourth or fifth. Yeah, Kingpin's a dick. And to be to be the uh, uh, in like three or four different rogues galleries is pretty oh, yeah. pretty accomplished. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> for sure. Um, man, I was gonna save him for you, but I'm gonna take Sabretooth. Saberto. Honestly, I wasn't even didn't even think about him, and I would have been mad afterward if no one said anything. <laughs> Leave Shriver though. Oh yeah, Leave yeah. Shriver is the yeah yeah. I, I don't <laughs> I don't give a shit about X one. No, I don't want the blonde one from the cartoon. No, yeah, Leave Shriver, hundred percent, hundred and ten fucking percent. I understood that reference. <laughs> Dr. Octavius. Yeah. Otto Octavius. Yeah. Octopus. Love Doc Ock. Yeah, Doc Ock's class. Most, a lot of my baddies come from Spider Man because I like I said I had a lot of Spider Man in my life, but Doc Ock's great. Especially in the most recent Spider Man Spider- movie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh uh, not yes. Spider Verse. Spider Verse. I like it, I like that iteration of No Way Doctor Ock too. Yeah. 
where they fix they fix him. Right. And it's like, God. I he was such I love that movie because of the tie ins with yeah, the yeah, old totally. films. Yeah, they did that that's wonderful. It's it is wonderful. So yeah, Doc Ock. I'm gonna go very dark horse on my fifth pick. Mm, okay. Based on I'd only ever heard of him when I picked up a Super Nintendo game where he is the primary villain. Arcade. Arcade. <laughs> Arcade. Oh, man. I can't support that decision, <laughs> but hey, man, it's your job. Spider-Man, <laughs> X-Men, Arcade's Revenge. Uh, you got me turned on that spider. You got me on that Spider-Man. Uh, you got the Green Goblin. You got Doc Ock. I know this is probably... I'll lean into this. Because Tyler said arcade, so it can't get any worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with Dr. Kurt Connors, the lizard. Mm. All right. I like I always like some of the best Spider Man comics, classic Spider Man comics, I thought had Kurt Connors in it. Because, yeah, I didn't know if you were going lizard or sandman. Oh, yeah, yeah. Lizard. Uh I mean I like Sandman okay. I just haven't read as much as mm. like I've read of comics with the lizard in it. I think the lizard's great because of that whole like that whole friendship that they had, they kind of, they kind of do the Doc Ock thing mm-hmm. um, with with Peter and, and and Kurt. So I like that. It's what the one the what what's that one universe where Sandman just fucking has it and jumps in Spider Man's mouth and bursts out of him. <laughs> wow. It's a, it's a gruesome, it's like, yeah, Spider-Man laying out and his ribs are all broken up, sticking out of his costume, and his sand's running out of him. The sand's like, I finally did it. I finally killed Spider-Man. I've had enough of your shit, Peter Parker. <laughs> Keep in mind, I could have done this 10 years ago. <laughs> you finally pushed me too far. Any honorable mentions? Uh, the Rhino. I mean, he's... Mm-hmm. The Rhino and Juggernaut. 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 Yeah. I thought of Onslaught as well. Yeah, man. I, I thought about Onslaught too because you said you were talking about Marvel versus Capcom and he's the boss in Marvel versus Capcom too. And I remember when that Onslaught storyline was going on when I was in high school mm-hmm. and I was really into it until until the reveal of Onslaught. And I was kind of like, oh, okay, well. Because it's like, it's, it's like Magneto that's in... Professor X, Juggernito, and it's just kind of like, oh, okay, well. Ah. <laughs> I thought Omega Red, but I didn't go Omega Red, dude. I, I, Omega Red was on my list too because I don't really know that much about him. He wasn't major. I know in the, mm-hmm. I guess, second volume of X Men, uh, the one that came out in the '90s. I know he was like a really big villain mm-hmm. for that first arc, but he was like, he was in Children of the Atom, the fighting game. And he was so much fun to play as because, like, he could, he kind of had like Doc Ock tentacles. Yeah. And he could send them into the ground and like snake people on the other side of the screen and stuff. Yeah. He was cool. Um, Good choice. Red Skull is a good one. Red Skull. Yeah. Um, I liked his arc a lot, especially in the MCU. Yeah. Uh, being being relegated to the being the guardian of the soul stone. Yeah, that's a great reveal. Kind of, it really yeah. is, and and for him to be resigned to that fate, mm-hmm. like he doesn't consider it punishment or reward. It's just this is what happened. This happened, and I am this, and that is what I am. You know, mm-hmm. and then the the way he has to play the unbiased, you know, sort of Raiders of the Lost Ark style guardian mm. of the chalice, right. you know, you have to do this thing if you want it to fucking work. And if you do, you'll get it. If you don't, you won't kind of thing. I just, I like that he is sort of brought down about a thousand pegs to that level, but he, he accepts that fate. And I think that's really cool. So yeah, Red Skull was definitely on there for me. I guess collectively the Sentinels. Master Mold. Sentinel slash Master Mold. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I almost almost mentioned Mr. Sinister. Yeah. I think Sinister's pretty cool. He's, in, he's mean, definitely interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting's a better a better descriptive word to use. We didn't name for the draft, we didn't name Killmonger or or Namor. <laughs> so those belong. I don't get any I don't nothing else comes to me. We want to take a break then and roll right into that game talk? Yeah, sure. Yes. 
get into some Dave the Diver coming up after these messages from our sponsor. We'll be right back. Have you discovered it yet? They have. They have. Discover the double delicious taste of Sushi Sushi. Share double delicious Sushi Sushi with family, with friends, or at work. Sushi Sushi, it's double delicious. And now the game talk. Hello. <laughs> Game talk. Game talk. I am woefully unprepared to talk about Dave the Diver, Bullshit. except that I've played this game more than I usually play the games we do for the Super Nintendo. So Girl, same. Maybe I am prepared. I don't know. We'll have to see. I don't think I am because, like, uh, I'm about eight hours in Dive the Diver, and <laughs> I, uh, I they're still introducing new shit to me. Like I it's like I'm eight hours shit, in, and they're like, man. "You can dive in the evening," and I'm like, "What? You're adding another dive phase?" Oh, to you this? see, you're farther along than I am. <laughs> I didn't know you could do that. So I mean, and then like a new like app is on my phone now, and it's like, I am eight <laughs> hours into this game. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> it's a lot. There's a lot to keep up with yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. But uh, let's see the. I guess the there's not really box art, but the. The cover art for the game. I don't even know what it looks like because I just bought it on Steam. It's kind of one of those things where it's like, I I I think it changes. Yeah, fairly on the store, uh, off and on on the store, depending on like what build of Dave the Diver this is, because it's being actively updated mm. by the developers, like constant. There's always some sort of an update. They're always bug fixing. They're super responsive to their community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I noticed that on the page. Yeah. Like, uh, high divers or yeah. attention divers. Yeah. yeah, big, big, old, big news always coming across the Steam community feed. So I like the, I like the typeface choice for I do Dave too. the Diver. I like the yellow. I think it's, I mean, smart decision. Mm -hmm. Play off of the sea blue. You mm -hmm. know, yeah. I mean, high quality. Pixel graphics. It, it's yeah. very high quality it's, pixel art. It's like a mis mishmash because like the characters are pixel art, but then like the ships are three D modeled. They're they're rendered. Yep. Um, the undersea environment. There's particle is, effects. Yeah. I mean, so it's like a it's like a whole bunch of different stuff that could clash, but it doesn't. And the fish are rendered. You can tell they're yeah, not pixelated right. either. Yeah. I mean, it's just. It's it's a really neat and and a really neat interesting mix of art styles, graphic styles, that makes it work. Yeah, it could go wrong, but it, but it does. I think it works really mm -hmm. well. It kind of gives off the, like the, you know, the Square Enix two D three D like. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh! A very popular Triangle RPG. Strategy. Uh, yeah, Triangle Strategy uses it. Octopath Traveler. Thank you. That's the one. Octopath Traveler. It kind of has vibes of that a little bit mm -hmm. uh, because that's, you know, mixing 2D art and 3D art. Um, but because most of this takes place underwater, uh, there aren't a lot of, like, buildings and stuff yeah, that you would see. It's essentially two games smashed into one. Yeah. Half of it is diving. I don't want to say simulator, but, I mean, diving adventure shooting fish, exploring, gathering materials, and then mm -hmm. the other part is sort of a cooking simulator where you're working in a sushi restaurant serving what you caught it's diving. A, it's more like a, remember that video game Tapper? Server yeah. simulator? Yeah, yeah <laughs> where you got to run to get the beer, catch the beer, serve it, send the glass back before it breaks or whatever, you know. It's like that. You you play Dave and Dave, not our Dave. Don't not to be mistaken for our. Don't you dare play. I'll take that rom hack host. though. <laughs> uh, but you gotta you gotta customers sit down at your sushi bar. Where Dave is Dave, you're Cobra, and I'm Banzo. Would be great. <laughs> somebody somebody make that happen. <laughs> I'm thrilled that you had me be Cobra because he's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, the. Uh, but you got a you got people coming to sit down at, at your sushi bar, and the chef 
prepares the dishes and you got to get them and then walk them over to the customer before their little aggravation bubble turns red. Yeah. Pour their green leave. tea just or right. Pour their green tea. Pour which, their beer. Pour their beer. When you get the beer you get upgrade. The beer. <laughs> That's right. And uh, you also bust the bar. And at some point, yes, you do. You bust the bar. And at some point, uh, you can hire help because it gets harder. So you yes. can hire help to help you serve the mm. food. You have to pick the menu each night before the restaurant opens. I like opens. that part a lot. I like that part, too, and it's very dependent. That The menu is like the linchpin of this game. Like the, the menu is what makes this game work, I think, because you generate money from the menu that you put together and then serve the customers, but you can only serve what you have caught in the diving portion of the game. So the menu is like – the menu is – that's the thing. Like that's the key. If you don't have the menu, you you can't. You're not bridging the diving mm. part with the restaurant part. And I, and I mean I, there's a story to this game which I kind of just didn't focus on. Because I, I kind of buzzed through it because I was ready to get back to doing one thing or the other. Same. Right. Yeah. yeah. Same. Yeah. I'm more interested in that loop. That loop is awesome. Mm-hmm. Of like it starts out where you dive in the morning, you dive in the afternoon, you send everything that you've caught back to uh, the sushi, rest- sushi restaurant, and then um, then you do the essentially the, the tapper game, which I think that part, I don't mean this is like a discredit to the game, but the sushi portion of the game very much felt like a mobile game to me. Like, it's, mm. It is. It's, mm-hmm. It is. Because like, like, I've played restaurant managers like yeah. on a mobile phone, and it, it has a lot of those like dog mark, like, do, like mm. all those hallmarks. I agree. And then the other thing, too, for me is that I tend to get overwhelmed pretty easily. And it, as you mentioned, there's a lot of things going on in this game yeah. all the time. And one of the things that I find... I I appreciate the dynamic and I appreciate this aspect of the game, but is the fact that your menu, you can really tailor it to a certain clientele. Yeah. You can pick all really expensive dishes depending on what you caught. You can, and then there's modifications to the dishes that you can earn like upgrades. You can upgrade the slots to the menu so you can have more things. Based on your social media ranking. And you've got yeah. a social media thing going the whole time, which is very much an Instagram-esque kind of thing. Cook stuff. Cook stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and um, what I do like which about that part. Which would be a good thing. It would. Cook stuff is really neat because... As you complete tasks and kind of overcome obstacles in the sushi part of it, which is heavily dependent on the diving part, what did you bring up? Right. Were there custom things that people, like certain restaurant reviewers, requested um, for in you given tasks to catch these certain fish so that the chef can do his ninjutsu mm. and make the, and he always does these really great cutscenes. I love sushi. all the cutscenes. Sushi jitsu. Oh, sushi <laughs> jitsu. Uh, I love all the cutscenes. The cutscenes are all so great and they're so funny because it just, it's exactly what you would expect. You're five minutes into this game, and one of these things happens. It's not a surprise. Hmm. You get the feel for the developer's sense of humor right. from these cutscenes, probably more than anything. Yeah, especially if you're not like keyed in on the dialogue throughout the game. But that menu, to me, it gets a little complex, and I find myself just kind of glossing over it and being like, "Eh, I'll just throw." five of these 27 gold ones on here and da, 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 da. I don't know how much I'm possibly hurting myself by how creating the menus the how much I'm leaving on literally leaving on the <laughs> right. table cuz when you don't when you aren't fast enough and you don't serve all the food what you don't serve is thrown away right. and it counts as a loss. Right. And, or if you don't know what you're doing and actually throw it away and have mad patrons like I did. Right. I was thinking, oh, I need to dash. Oh no, I threw it away. Right. You <laughs> can press the wrong button. But in when you're when you're running behind the bar, you can move a little bit faster right. and you hold by holding down the trigger and this little stamina meter goes down real mm, quick because Dave, yeah. Dave's kind of an overweight fella. Yeah. Which he's, they point out a lot. Yeah, they feel do. kind of bad. He's not, <laughs> a, <laughs> a lot of, he's not the most athletic. He's an extremely gifted diver, uh-huh. uh, but he's not exactly fleet of foot, yeah. as they say. So you're kind of hobbling the dishes. and the. It's, it's a very frantic sort of situation. 
um, which we all know I'm not terribly fond of. Um, but I don't know how much more I should be paying attention to my menu because, like Tyler said, I want to get back to diving. I want to get back to that boat. I want to be under that water, catching them fish, completing them quests, which you get lots of. Yes. Mm -hmm. and the money you You're make, never bored. It loops back around because the money that you make at the restaurant, you can then put into to buying more stuff. gear for yeah. your for So your it's dive. essential yes. that you do well. And I've always had pretty good days at the sushi bar, but I'm in chapter one. I just Well, I'm in chapter two now. I just finished chapter one a couple of days ago. Um, but at the same time, I find it to be a... It's it's overwhelming at first, but it's very entertaining and very. It's one of those really good games to keep just kind of put down for a while and then come back and play another couple of hours and then go back to it later. Um, I've I've really had a good time with it. It's just some of the components aren't my jam. It was hard for me to put down. Is kind of what I ran into because uh, there were times there's twice. This week that I fell asleep playing it, I wake up and you know Dave's dead, right? Because uh, he drowned because right. <laughs> I fell asleep. <laughs> but I mean, it's like I don't mean that as and it's a boring no, game. It, I mean, I played it until, until my body you, was like, "We're done." Yeah. No. Well, and it We're, doesn't help that this the music, yes, <laughs> is so underwater, soothing, is very soothing. calypso kind of mellow undersea tunes that just mm. really. It's very like moody. Like Donkey Kong Country music underwater music. It's so yeah. good. It just feels Ambience. good. <laughs> it does. It's, it's very this, good. I, I love this game. I will I will still keep playing this game I after we're done with this episode. I knew that yeah, you would I like this game. Was this was my prediction jam. when yeah. we did Pizza Tower. I tried yeah, to I tried different. to pacify you, <laughs> you by saying I'm very certain that you'll like yeah. David no, I, did, I did like it. And I, I agree I do with have... you. I think this is better than Pizza Tower. I mean, I really liked Pizza Tower, but this is like... It's paced better. This is paced better. Well, and it's more diverse. It's subjective, of course. It but, is, uh, but I yeah. mean, but yes, it's the one thing that the one my complaint about the game so far is what I've mentioned is you're introducing new mechanics to me eight hours in. This tells me that it's a long game, and I guess that's okay. I just kind of got bummed out when I was like, okay, how long to beat? Uh, Twenty two hours. Good lord, that seems like a lot for this kind of game. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be a lot of people's jam. Yeah. But, and, you know, if I weren't playing it for a show and I didn't feel like oh, I got to play this, play this, play this, play this, I might have a different attitude about it. But, I mean, I, I kind of got to the point where it's like, Jesus Christ, we, can we, like... <laughs> I, I, I get that same... Move there's along. There's got to be a word for that because I do find myself becoming... It's like whenever I've, I've actually... I think I may have mentioned this in a previous game. It's like, God, what was it? What was that beat game that came out? That musical game that recently came out on Xbox Game Pass? Hi-Fi Rush. Hi-Fi Rush was like that for me. Yeah. When you play through the intro and the training segment, it just keeps throwing more moves at you. And it's like... Fuck! I just want to play the game, and you, it kept interrupting me, interrupting my pace when I felt like I was getting somewhere with a new move. This is like that in a way. This is like, okay. Now we've got the guy who wants you to collect all the fish cards, and he's going to come up and tell you how to use this app, which I did not fuck with. Right, <laughs> one single bit. I was like, choo choo. I don't think so, man. I got like a sushi. I I got guns I, and guns yeah, and fish. Man. I got a lot of fucking money to make, dude. I don't have time to play Pokemon yeah. with you. It, it is, and it is. It's fish Pokemon, really. Yeah. And, oh, except with real animal, like real based fish. on real animals. <laughs> My real only. Fish. <laughs> problem with the game though which i did i really liked it I genuinely very much liked it is the same problem i have with stardew valley in that the stuff i enjoyed it once i started enjoying it it was over and then like what like by the time i'm really enjoying diving and catching oh. fish i'm out of air right I'm out of weight i've that's it and you can you know enhance those so you can go longer but it's still 
not long enough. I'm finally I'm in the groove and happy and getting that dopamine and I'm done. Yeah. Okay, I, get I go that. back to the sushi. Doesn't matter. All right, I'm hitting the groove, pouring, I'm good, and then oh that's done. Right. So I get it's like I'll, I'll compare it to listening to my brother, my brother and me. They do an hour long show. After an hour, I'm like, oh already? Okay, I wish there was more, but I'm satisfied. None, none of these segments are long enough to satisfy me completely. I get, I'm frustrated because I was just starting to have fun. I think I don't know how far you're into it, but the diving segments get longer. Okay, and and they do introduce that evening diving session. I'm excited too. So for that. I didn't know about two that. to three, and I mean there's diving sessions where it's like I get I get frustrated because I run out of weight. So yeah. to you know clarify, what, I mean? what, what, they're, what they're referring to is, for our listeners that sure. don't know, is when you're underwater and you're, you collect things, you collect a, a lot of different things. You collect fish. not just fish, you can collect different... Or, like, or like lead, soy glass, sauce, ingredients, <laughs> bits yeah. and pieces of this, that, or the other, rocks, wood, rope, things like that that are all used either for crafting or mm-hmm. for selling in the sushi restaurant or whatever... You have a finite amount of weight. You, as it as is to be expected, this is a, as you said, Tyler, sort of a simulator. In other words, you do have to keep track of how much you're carrying, how much oxygen you have, how deep you can go, right? And of course, all this can be upgraded with money. That's as you were mentioning, Dave, that. You can make a suit, your suit, upgradable to go deeper and deeper and deeper, so the pressure doesn't crush you. or you can get a bigger oxygen tank so you can stay under longer without having to top off, or a bigger crate that allows you to carry more weight so you can get more shit. Because once you come up, you come up. So if you dive in the morning, you can go down, fill up your weight, do whatever you need to do, and then go up, and then you've got the afternoon. Time passes. You do it in the afternoon. That phase is done. But when you come out in the afternoon... Until apparently it unlocks evening diving. At first, you have to stop and go to the restaurant and do the sushi Mm -hmm. fishing or sushi serving, I should say. But one of the other things, too, though, is there are quests and things that come up that are that trigger events. So if you are out, you're down there diving, you're like Tyler said, you're in the groove, you're finding all this good fish doing all this shit, and then you do the quest thing, it, it can immediately end, and you have to come back up, right? and that ends your diving session. So, But the good news is you can choose whether or not to deal with the quests right now. I tend to go ahead and to do them. Yeah, just knock them out. But there is a lot to keep up with. And, I mean, all that upgrading... I mean, I, I, there's times where I'm diving for an hour. Like, I mean, it gets to a point where it's, I mean, it feels like a really long time. It does. It it does seem like you're down there for a real long time sometimes. And one of the other things I was going to mention before I forget is there's no health meter. Right. I think that's great. When you're underwater, if you get it, there's some aggressive fish, there's Mm, sharks, sharks. there's. Does it drain your oxygen a little bit? It drains your oxygen. So your oxygen oxygen. is your, it's all about the oxygen. Yeah. But I was like, what what kind of damage am I taking here? I bet it's oxygen. Yeah. I, I was too like, fuck, 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 to right. even like look over at the meter. Is this going down while I'm getting yeah. it? Yeah, and it's it, nice, too, because it, it's you just have one thing to manage, and the oxygen depletes on its own as you, as you breathe it. Mm-hmm. It is reduced when you're hit by aggressive fish or sometimes pirates. Yeah. Um, there's a segment where it's like, oh, cool, I'm just murdering people Yeah, you now. get to, like, <laughs> shoot it. You get to shoot harpoons at people. It, it was very, like, out of the blue, felt like yeah. very, like, almost clashing with the feel of They're the They're coming right for me. <laughs> <laughs> but then they do. I mean, I shot. I, I, sh- I felt like fucking Anchorman. Where it's like, I shot a dude with a sniper rifle. Yeah. He's like, bl- lo- yeah. like floating in the water, face down, <laughs> blood pouring out of him. And then at the end of it, they're all like, we're okay. <laughs> they reassure you, you're right. not a murderer. Right. But we have been humiliated and we're leaving. But, uh, uh, and then also with the oxygen, uh, if you swim fast it depletes faster too so yeah they, they, they or if you're too heavy yeah and you start swimming you will deplete your oxygen faster i think it's great it's all designed around that 
oxygen it, mechanic. It is, yeah. and it's Because when you can find an escape pod, which right. the I was bummed out the first time because death in this game is fucking brutal. It's fuck. It makes it me. It makes me want to rage quit. It could be it worse, but it is brutal. It does suck no. when I have full weight, like I'm encumbered, and then it's like, oh fuck, you that is a shark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is a shark, and I can't go very fast at all. So what happens <laughs> is you might have a crate full of all this awesome fish and these rocks and this stuff, and you're ready to mm-hmm. cash the fuck out. If you get killed. You can only bring you. You get to choose one, one thing, thing out so of the crate. It could be worse. It could be zero. <laughs> it could be yeah. zero. But it's almost not worse. It, it would almost not be worse because I gotta. I gotta really labor. I have two things for this quest. <laughs> oh, Which one man. of these one things right. am I keeping? And I have to go back for the other thing. Which one of these things was the hardest to get? You know, it's it's it's. it's actually pretty cool that yeah, they give cool. you that moment of regret it, but you learn you yeah. learn the hard way that you better be careful take it easy but you can't just go up and cash your shit in and go right go back, back down, down you've got right. to take into consideration that this is one of my diving sessions it's risk this reward is, this is gonna if this ends now yeah i might not be able to come back down here and yeah. The other thing about this game that is kind of interesting and cool is that the layout of the undersea area changes every day. Yeah. It's like a Diablo 2 dungeon. Changes yeah. every time you go into it. Although I think that I do think that's really cool. I was expecting it to change more than it's it not does. A, extreme it, it's by not extreme. It's not drastic. Because a, a lot they a lot of the tiles are reused and yeah, there are a lot yeah. of that. So well, they also have quest things that they have to build in right. that have to be at least somewhat findable again because I've almost died looking for a thing that I needed to kick off a quest a quest feature. Sure. So they have to at least be consistent with that so you don't spend all your time searching. And they're constrained by width too because I feel like this the it's called what? The blue sea, the blue hole, blue hole. the blue hole. Yeah. yeah. It's this it's this geographic anomaly where like mm-hmm. all the fish of the world live in this blue hole. It's a spot in the of water. And it's it's not very wide, but it's very deep. Very deep. So I think the limitation of the width also comes into play with how like with how varied it is. Yeah. 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 And you could I don't know how deep it goes, but I've Me been neither. I've been pretty fucking deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I've got like a level five suit. I've been upgrading the shit out of my suit and my oxygen tank, and I've gone pretty fucking far. Yeah. And I haven't even, I haven't even gone two thirds of the de- the depth that I can go with the suit that I have. And I've got the Logitech controller. I go deep. I'm dead. <laughs> so. Please reconnect controller. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, er, well, early on. I was upset because I had bo- all my quest items, a full full load of fish. Like it was, it was a good run, and then I'm swimming and I see escape pod. Like okay, well I don't want to touch that yet. I'll wait till my oxygen is almost over, and then then I'll then I'll deal with it. Yeah, that's so I that's do. what I do. And I barely got any oxygen left. And I get it. I hit the button. I'm like all right, cool. Okay, it's taking forever. Now there's a cut scene. Okay, this and then I'm, then I'm just dead. I was like, I wish I would have known how that works. Oh, because you have to hold, you have to the, hold button the button down. down. Yeah, and, and then, let yeah, the little circle thing. Yeah, like I wish before I dove, he would have said, "Hey, there are certain places under here where if escape pod, it'll take me some time to get." But I have to do it while I'm down there. Because why would if I have plenty of oxygen, why would I go check the escape pod? If I have, I've done it. Uh-huh. it I've done it when. I may have plenty of oxygen, but I got a real aggressive fucking shark on my tail. Well, yeah, I'm good now that I know. Yeah, now like that right. very first time that I first, didn't know how yeah. how it worked. That I, that made me a little salty. I get that. Like, I do. I get so greedy in this game. So greedy. Yeah, we talked I about this, this, this a little bit on Tuesday when I was working on the sh- editing the show Tuesday. Dave was playing, uh, and the whole time he, you're he, hearing. Bloom, 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 bloom. I'm bloom, like, which is my oxygen. I'm like, bro, <laughs> it's, it's making me because we mentioned that the oxygen starts blaring. The whole screen flashes like red, red. around the edges when and, you're, and but it's you. like, 
it's at like 40. at forty <laughs> out of a hundred and whatever. Forty is a you got plenty of time. You still got plenty like a time. lot of time, but it gets you in that. Mode, you know, it's like I gotta hurry. Exactly. Or you've got, you know, you're under a minute in Mario. Uh, right. You know, the music starts yeah, up, yeah. real fast. Da, 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 da. Yeah. It, that adds to the stress, and it's like, yo, I like it. Let me turn it down to warn me at thirty. Give me an option to be cool warn to me customize it. at thirty or twenty, because by that point probably a good idea for me to find my way out of here anyway if i haven't done that i probably deserve I've to drowned die so many yeah. times because it's yeah. just like nope <laughs> no and i'm like my inventory is already full and i'm like all right throwing rocks out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't caught that fish yet you know well, i love getting the the little tube thing that makes you just go super fast to the surface what's that the now? oxygen tail that. There's some little oh. the scuba thing where scuba divers will have to go deeper, but it's the, the automated scooter. thing. It makes you the go scooter. faster. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I love that scooter, yeah, too. Yeah, I do, too. But it burns out too fast. It does. Like, I, I, I got one. The first time I got one, I was like, wee! <laughs> oh, I'm out, of, I'm out of fuel for this. It just goes, bzzz, you got to use it sparingly. I, I use it to escape. Sharks. I use it to kill sharks. You can kill. You can kill with it. My go-to is a sniper rifle, and so I pair up that scooter with the sniper rifle. And I, I have you used a sniper rifle? No. Much? Sniper rifle fucking rules because it's like I see that shark. They don't see me. <laughs> so you got a huge distance. Oh yeah, and you've got like a a laser sight. Oh, so you, like it's, I have it's got to get accurate. me one of those. The problem is it only has three shots, but. There's ammo. There's ammo everywhere. So what okay. I'll do is I'll find a shark. I'll take note of where ammo is because you don't kill a shark in three. It's right. at least like four. Right. So I'll shoot the shark. It, that gets his attention. And as he comes close to me, I scoot out of the way. And I use the scooter to pick up the other ammo. And then go uh, back and snipe and finish him off. Killing a shark is so much fun because... A, they suck. They, <laughs> they will fuck you will Yeah, the up. first time I see one, it's like, oh, up. there's a fin off on the screen, and I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> they will fuck you up. And there's one point in the game where I was swimming around deeper than normal looking for a quest item, and there was a fucking huge that fucking tiger, tiger shark. shark, man. It scared me. <laughs> yeah, it's like the biggest I thing. I was like, whoa, yeah. shit. Yeah. When you see it, it, it is the biggest thing that yeah, you see so in far. the game. Well, the so cra- far. The Kraken. <laughs> well, that is, that, that is true. The Kraken's much larger. <laughs> but it is. Uh, but the other thing that's great about killing a shark is that the sushi you can make from the sharks just go for so much money. Oh, God. So yeah. much money. The meat's so heavy. Like the other day, I swear mm. to you, I'd killed three sharks and my inventory is like maxed out. Is this I'm when still you were like, at, I can kill one more. Is this when you were at like 60 and trying to swim out? And, yeah, yeah, my max is supposed to be 45 and I'm at 69 <laughs> kilograms. <laughs> Triggered the shit out of me. I was just like, God, Dave, please don't look. just go up. Find. I was like, find a find an escape pod. He's like, I'm fine. I'm like, no, you're not. No, please. But I love it because it's like you. What I love about the, so another thing that's great about the sharks is one of my favorite things to do in the sushi restaurant is you can upgrade your recipes. Yeah, that's what I was mentioning earlier. And but I don't know really much about that. Because there's well, yeah, it's awesome because it's like if you have so let's say you can make a dish out of three fish, but you have six fish. You can take three of those fish and upgrade the quality of that menu item. And that's a permanent mm. upgrade. So, and by upgrading it, it means that it generates more money for you and it generates more customer satisfaction. So what's great about sharks, not only are they made, not only can you make really expensive dishes with them, they provide so much meat that you can upgrade them rapidly. So, I mean, you go up with a couple, I mean, you kill a few sharks and go up and it's like all of a sudden you're, you're selling like $200 sushi Damn. per plate i mean it's just like and then that can just go right back in the cargo yeah that was my loop because my whole thing like was just like put it all in that cargo. box <laughs> <laughs> bigger box more sharks fit in the box <laughs> <laughs> it so, 
makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. <laughs> and that was that was way more fun to me than like the quest stuff was. Like any of that, like my thing was just like, how can we kill more sharks, make more money? See, I'm qu- I'm questing. I'm- Capitalism rules. Yeah, well, like man, when it's when it's when it's so cut and dry like that, mm. and you don't have like, oh man, I gotta go in and like I gotta prove this shark recipe with through the government. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. <laughs> when it's a video game where she just gets like a samurai dude, he's like, yeah, I'll cook that up. <laughs> Well, I'm a quester, and I, I like doing the quests and moving the story along and finding the the weebs, you know, anime figurine. God, is something else, it's isn't great. it? It's great. Um, but what I love about this game, and in case we haven't made it clear, this is a really good game, and I think we're yeah. all on the same page mm-hmm. that we yeah, like it. Mm-hmm. I think it's a great game. Um, 100%. But it... It has something for everybody. You can be the kind of pr- player that you are and get satisfaction from this game. Whatever you like is probably going to work out for you. Yeah, you know, one way or the even though everything ties in together, you can focus on a specific aspect of that whole part of the game or whatever and be satisfied with it. Yeah. So it's been it's really well thought out and and. Very well designed. Very well, very you, well you designed. You get dive specific weapons, right? That once you're once you leave, you don't have that anymore. Right. So yes. like the poison harpoon and shit like that, you don't carry over. So there's you don't carry over. But what happens eventually is, have you met Duff yet? No. So, oh, with the the, the anime guy, yes. the gun, the gun maker. Yes. Okay. Yes. So the way that works is, and I think this is really neat. If you pick a weapon up, Duff can make it. So if you're down on a dive, uh, you're right. When you come back up, that weapon is thrown away, essentially. But if you find the components, he can make that weapon so that you do have it available permanently. Okay, so cause like, I'd like to get that baseball bat I got that one time over the knife. I don't know if he can do melee weapons or not. I don't either. Because he that, might just be able to do guns. Again, the so weapon... So John Turley in, in the Tadpog remake is Duff. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Partly. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. gun part. Not the weeb part. The well, it's, like it's Star Trek like, stuff oh, instead of anime oh, stuff. That, uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Because Duff gave me like some Scott vibes from <laughs> your, <Yeah. laughs> your actual okay. play. He <laughs> might be the embodiment of Scott from, from the Scott Pilgrim versus the world actual plays we Scott did. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, But the gun part of it is a whole thing. Just like the fish cards are a whole thing and the insta cooksta is a whole thing right. and the the quests you get sent on are uh, it, there are so many like deep components to this game it shocks me that it was as cheap as it was yeah it's 20 bucks given how much this game has in it because that says nothing about you can upgrade your restaurant you can Hire more employees. Mm-hmm. You can change the look of your place. You know, there's all manner of things that you can do in this game. You pour a lot of time into this game. Uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, which I think is a good thing, but it's also one of those things where it's like, man, I'll be honest. I thought this was a. I thought this was a great game, and I had a lot of fun mm-hmm. with it. And it didn't feel like some of the games we play feels like work. This didn't feel like work. This was fun. This was an enjoyable experience. For However, me I'm not sure I'm going to go back to it. And it's not because it's not because I didn't enjoy it. It's just you put all, you put a lot of time into it. Well, there's just other stuff. There's just so much stuff to yeah. play. You're probably at the diminishing returns point of it. Yeah, maybe. I, I'd like to check out more of the evening dives and see because I hear like the fish, they're more aggressive fish in there. It means more sharks, maybe. <laughs> uh, but. I don't know. It's just, and I, I think this game like really got a lot of popularity because of when it came out. Because it was earlier this year, it was before all the big game. Because like this year got fucking crazy in July. Like yeah, around July yeah. hit, and it's like a lot of like Diablo Four came out, Final Fantasy Sixteen came out. You know, like Baldur's Gate Three mm-hmm. came out. Like a bunch of big, a big fucking year. heavy hitters came out. Uh, this game, like I feel like just beat just beat all of those out. Mm. And I think that if it had come, like if this game came out, like 
if it had come out like three weeks ago, I don't, I don't know, man. Yeah. I think it might have just been swallowed up. It might have, but then again, I think too the one of the big factors for this game's success is the Steam Deck. I think, yeah, this, in my opinion, this is a must-have if you own a Steam Deck. I think it works. It runs so well on the deck. You can see everything. The controls are flawless. We haven't really even touched touched on the controls. Well, I was about to say, can you remap the controls? I didn't look into that. I think but. you can do that. I know you can do it like on the deck. You can make your own template. Okay, because I got frustrated trying to play it. What the harpoon feels weird. Yeah, having so to slow down and then pick it up. I kept. I, I hit the wrong button. The whole the whole goddamn time. I, I did was that playing. a lot too. I kept, I kept hitting the wrong buttons. Um, I did that a lot too, and you do eventually get get accustomed to it. But like. Think the controls, like the movement and the the intuitive layout of the controls, the way that it's put together is really yeah. I like the really mini well. bullet time you go into when you yeah. have the harpoon. Yeah, yeah, so. it's helpful. And but I think this game really truly shines brightest on the Steam Deck because aside from being easy to see and easy to control, it's easy on the battery. It doesn't mm. require a whole lot of resources, and you can play for a few hours on one charge without having to think about it. I, I was shocked. I played it for a few hours the other day, and when I finished, I exited out and went back to the menu, the main menu, and I still had 59% battery left. Yeah. And that's unusual for the deck, <laughs> right, yeah. especially depending on what you play. If it's a head graphics heavy like Baldur's Gate or something like that, like two hours, it's yeah. gonna chew through that shit quick. But this did not, and I think, I think a big, huge reason for that game's success is because I think it was designed with the Steam Deck in mind. I think it was made for that platform first. I think there's some, maybe some supporting evidence there because it's only out on PC and Mac right now. Uh huh. Um, and oh, it works with Mac. According to, I haven't tried it myself. I would try that. I, I might try that just to have it just on my Mac, just in case. Yeah. Um, but I don't see it. There's not a schedule released for any other system other than the Switch, and the Switch is, you know, also a, a handheld. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I agree with you. I think this is like a great. This is a fantastic portable. Uh, experience, and that might be honestly the next time I play it. If it you're on a trip, on a plane. if you're on a right, plane, right, right, if you're, right. yeah, if you're going to be waiting, uh, if you're a door dasher and you're sitting in your car and you don't have anything to do between orders, right. you could pull this up and play it easily uh, and have a good time uh, while you're while you're while you're waiting. So, yeah, I, I think this game is essential for the Steam Deck. If you have one uh, and you're looking for something good to play. Day the divers where it's at. There's there's a little something from every for everybody in there, and it's it's appealing to most. I think most people could find something to like about this game. It's yeah, I agree. I think I feel like this is uh, appealing to a wide audience, very wide audience. Um, I know Tyler brought up the melee weapons, and I fucking love the melee weapons in this yeah. game because you start with they're like satisfying. a satisfying. They are <laughs> the sound with, and they're is, goofy. Sound is good. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, like you is. start with a dagger, but you can get like a golf club, a baseball a bat. There's a stun <laughs> baton. There's the cheap katana, yeah. and then there's the expensive katana. <laughs> yeah, they're, one of my favorite one is uh, literally a poison eel or like a sea snake. Yes, and you use it as like I a whip, that. and it only it only strikes downward, so it feels like a. It feels like a Castlevania one whip. Okay, yeah. But it's a it's a sea snake, <laughs> and when it hits something, it poisons them. Uh, I think I loved all that stuff. The variety and a lot of the humor comes through in those melee weapons too. It does for sure. The harpoon has different like tips, which I think is really cool. Like you can you can apply like an electric tip yep. to it, and that like. It changes the way the harpoon works. Like when it when a harpoon hits a fish, um, you can move the joystick left and right, and if you do it enough times before time runs out, it shocks the fish mm. and they become paralyzed. Uh, there's another one that's like the the fire harpoon tip that mm -hmm. that burns the fish, and they each have a different like mini game mechanic to them. Um, like I think the harpoon by itself, the regular one, 
like you have to tap the A just button tap. to fill up a meter. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the that's the poison really cool. you rotate to fill up the skull with the green. Oh, see, so I hadn't done that oh, one. No, I don't I think I've ever either. gotten that one. Okay. So yeah, it's neat. It and it's it's essential in a game like this that's run based because you you need to you need that variety. Yes. Or else it's going to feel stale really fast. Well, and they put plenty of weapon chests and supply chests yes. and oxygen tanks and ammo boxes around littered around the ocean floor for you to find and pick up. Lots of variety per run and it it's all there almost immediately. Yeah. Uh that's true. You don't have to wait for a lot of that good shit to show up. Right, the core is the, right there. Yeah, and yeah. the thing is you just can't take it with you. You just can't take that weapon back up with you. You can use it while you're down there, and then it's gone unless you get the guy to make it for you later. But yeah, those are the the variety. I love the little trident thing, the little trident gun, the, the triple gun. axle. Yeah, yeah, uh, it shoots in three directions all at once, and you can really just murder some fish. It does a lot of damage, man. Yeah. And you got to be right. You gotta be right the fuck up in a shark's face. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, because the first time I saw that shark, it was coming from me. Cannot know you die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> sharks are scary. Sharks are scary. Because they're there are achievements in this game uh, already. Plenty. Yeah. I think they're good. Yeah. Yeah, because there's no shortage of like. Nice little pop ups for, for unlocking different achievements. So I saw Dave, you had a fuck ton of them by the Do time I? I logged on. Yeah. I I, didn't, I don't know how many I've got. I don't know either. But um, they come pretty quick, I feel like. Yeah. I, I didn't chase, and this is probably wouldn't chase any of them. Uh, yeah. Anyway, because this is like, this kind of gives me Hades vibes, like a little bit as far as it being like run based, mm. but it doesn't have that same kind of like. Doesn't have that same draw. That, oh yeah, that, yeah. That no. Hades, Hades like I was, yeah. I would and, look. Do I have time for a run? Like right. Yeah. And I mean, I got a little bit of that. Honestly, like I did get a little bit of that with Dave the Diver because I'd come home f- for lunch, and I'd eat turkey sandwich on bagel, <laughs> and um, <laughs> not a lot of variety in my diet. Uh, and then I would be like, uh, I got twenty minutes. I could probably no way get through through a dive. Uh, in that time, but I would do it anyway. Mm. <laughs> um, so yeah, I got a little bit of that, but it just didn't have the problem with the problem I have with it is that Hades came out first, and Hades is like the bar for run based games yeah. for me. Like yeah. it, and that's and that's a high, that's a super bar. high bar. Yeah. It's not fair to Dave the Diver because <laughs> I think it's an excellent game, but I mean, my bar is yeah, it's up there. I still play Hades. I started over on my deck. Did you? Mm-hmm. Mm. Hades yeah. is a great game. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, it's fun, and it's a good one to just jump in, do a few yeah, runs. Of all the out. games yeah. that I would erase my memory so I could experience all over again, that's definitely yeah. up there. God, God. Hades is so good. Huh? Hades too. I know. Dude, I'm fucking ready for that shit. Man. I'm, I'm c- just curious to see what they do. Yeah. Because it's one of those where it's like, Ooh, that's they, be, they, that's they must have had a good idea because they originally said <laughs> no, we're not right. going to do sequels. So somebody must have been like, okay, I know somebody we said that. Somebody must have been like, but... guys, this made a shitload. <laughs> yeah. You know how we said we weren't going to do it? Uh, look at this number. <laughs> yeah. And then they're like, we have how many investors? They want to give us how much money? Uh, we got to make that. Yeah, we'll we'll do something. We'll make it good. <laughs> but I hope. But I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I, I know that. Super I would have was... thought they would have like. I have a good enough idea to justify this. Right. This and time you have to break in. Yeah. To Hades. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> I, I've world. seen that on Reddit where everyone was talking about like, what if the sequel was, uh, you make it to Mount Olympus and you live, but you want to escape Mount Olympus, so then you have to. And all the the Chthonic, the Chthonic gods are instead sending you boons to climb down Mount Olympus and try to escape. Man, you know what would be cool is if it was you make it to Mount Olympus and you're escaping, but you you have to kill the the gods 
on Olympus, mm -hmm. and the ones that you kill lock out the boons that you can have. Ooh. Oh, so yeah, then you're in yeah. this situation where it's like you're almost, if you want to do like 100% completion, you have to not accept certain you have boons to do on not, certain yeah. ones. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. I wonder if they're doing, I wonder if Super Giant uh, is doing that like lost thing where they're just like, we're just going to keep our eyes on Reddit. <laughs> they might. Yeah, the people are going to have some really good ideas. <laughs> they know. They know what they have. They know yeah. their fan base, and they they probably will run with some of that shit. Where Lost was like, "What people are guessing it? Make it not make Fuck any it. sense, so no one <laughs> yes, can predict exactly. it. Make it fucking awful. <laughs> I don't care. No one guesses. This will get them. It's like that where uh, Josh guessed the uh, the the boss in Jacob's game, and fuck it, you're Fuck fighting. it. You're fighting fuck it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, man. I haven't rewatched Lost. <laughs> Nikki, oh, I have. Nikki rewatched it. Well, so and, I, I and I know it wasn't as strong on that <laughs> rewatch. Maybe don't. But, man. Season one is still fucking it great. It is still great. Season one is still <laughs> super fucking strong. That's when it's all fresh, and I like the survival angle still going sure. on, but. Anytime I think about it, though, anytime I think about rewatching it, I think about that whole season that took place in the past that doesn't fucking matter at all. And I'm like, man, yeah. I don't yeah. think I want to rewatch I, Lost. I don't. I don't recommend it because it was a few years ago, but we re, we rewatched it, and I was just like, fuck. The ha hatch the is magic. Pink. Oh, After yeah, Hatchet, yeah, yeah, it's all yes. downhill. Yeah, Hatch is great. And I, rem right, I, I still feet. get chills, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the Hatch, mm -hmm. about that reveal, and about them. I mean, how stressful was it to just speculate for months? What the fuck is it? What's in there? I loved it. It was, it was one of my favorite moments in television. And then, yeah, you're right. After that, it was like, fuck, yep. what have you done? Once they got off the island, you know what I mean? Mm. That's like the L.A. noir -like thing for me, <laughs> where it's like, I feel like, I've said this on the show before, but in L.A. noir, I feel like the good story is done. Same with Persona 4 Golden, where it like yeah. reaches a point where it's like, <laughs> okay, I feel like this was the, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> The thing is, it should, it's over now, right? Yep. No, it's not. There's more, and it's not as good as what just happened. God. I mean, I guess I do need to romance the fortune teller, but fine. <laughs> I think uh, L.A. Noir is a bigger offender of that than Persona 4 Golden. But, like, because L.A. Noir is like, man, it's all about this fucking, like, homicide mystery and then mm -hmm. it's like you solve it <laughs> and then the game keeps going for some reason <laughs> you're on the arson unit now okay what? <laughs> <laughs> no I beat this game <laughs> it's like fucking Lord of the Rings it never ends <laughs> this is this is it's over right nope they're gonna they're gonna are they gonna kiss <laughs> Anything? Any other comments about the game? I think we've covered it pretty thoroughly. Yeah, I think so. Tyler? Yes, Dave. If you were to give this game a beard, that mm -hmm. sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? The beard of Iron Chef French Hiroyuki Sakai. Because mm. he had a perfect, he had a little, his nice little mustache and his red, his shiny red <laughs> chef suit. <laughs> It just here. Those are standard issue, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I was looking up names because I was like, "What are all the names?" I forgot there was an Iron Chef Italian, and they all look so ridiculous. <laughs> but that's part of the fucking appeal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Iron sure. Chef Italian is like, looks like he's just draped himself in the shiny <laughs> Italian flag. His toque is like all the colors of of the Italian. It's kind of like professional wrestling for yeah. Like for cooks. For cooks, right? <laughs> yeah, it kind of is. Holy shit. Good call on that one. <laughs> Cuz you got that original one. I I really I didn't give a shit about the American one. Didn't give a shit. Tried it like it's not as good. It's not weird. So That's a bummer. It's all yeah. all all the good alluring stuff is is gone. No one's going squish on. Squish on. The Iron Chef French was I think he had the best record. He might, he was close. It was between two of them to have the best record in the whole thing. 
So Iron Chef French. If you were to get this game a pair of glasses, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what kind of glasses would you get? The glasses of Iron Chef Japanese Masahara Morimoto. Ah, yes. Ah. Which he's still like around here in America. He's got major. Let's on my bucket list is to go to one of his restaurants. What? what he was super. He was his? super young in in the Iron in Iron Chef in, yeah. in Japan. Now you know he's 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 pretty old. Um, Oh, what is it's one it's one simple na- one simple name. I know what it is. I can't remember the name. It's there's one in Vegas. Yep. Yeah. It's in Caesars. I bet it's affordable. <laughs> I didn't go there, but I'm a guy who eats turkey sandwiches in his room. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me your restaurants. Is it Nobu? Nobu. That's it. Yeah, that's the one that's in Caesars. It took me a while to get there, but yeah, no boo. I thought about it, but then I was like, I gotta get COVID from Chris Rock. I can't be going. <laughs> it was I on can't my be list. spending. I can't be spending Chris Rock money on some <laughs> on some food. That's ridiculous. No. <laughs> Again, watch the menu. Starring Ray Fine. I thought about it earlier today. Well, that's, I guess that's something. It's better than nothing. It is. <laughs> All right. Well, we have a little bit of time. If we're going to take a few calls, we could do that. Sure. Take a break. Head to Community Corner. Yeah. Sounds good to me. All right. Stay tuned for that. If I can find the button I need to press, it's somewhere around here. Christmas presents for my boyfriend is one of the most impossible things ever. I can't even think of anything that's new or different or will please him. Catch this. It's Sports Illustrated's most exciting Christmas gift ever, the football phone, free with a paid subscription to SI. I would love something like this for Christmas. The football phone works like a regular phone. It plugs into a standard jack and has push-button dialing, on-off ringer, mute button, and automatic redial. I hope she orders that for Christmas for me. And the football phone is free. That's even better. And I don't have to go shopping for it, I hope. What do I have to do to get this? It's free if you get Sports Illustrated at their biggest Christmas savings ever, a year subscription at almost 65% off the cover price. You can be billed after the new year, or you can use your credit card today. I'll buy it for my father, my brother, and my boyfriend. You only pay 99 cents an issue, and the subscription includes all the previews in the swimsuit issue. Sports Illustrated, I should have thought of that a long time ago. The mom, if you're watching, please, for once. Don't wait. Call our toll-free number now and get Sports Illustrated at their biggest Christmas savings ever and get the football phone free. I want this phone. Time for Community Corner. But first... The randomizer. Yes. We forgot something, everybody. What Steam game do we want to play next? I said we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that at all. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3? Okay, sounds good to me. <laughs> Our six-part Baldur's Gate 3 series. Uh, maybe longer than that. <laughs> How long was Scott Pilgrim versus the world? This might rival that. <laughs> <laughs> so what would you guys do at Baldur's Gate 3 this week? I will. I will start it if we want to do that. <laughs> God, I, we're not going to get anywhere I bought it, near enough. But content. I have it. I mean, yeah, we would have a multi-part series on Baldur's Gate. I would love to talk to you guys about it, but yes, that would be a tough to. It would be tough to do anything else on this podcast other than other than that for probably a year. <laughs> yeah, it could easily go that long. We could do it as, you know how Hades, it was its own segment for like nigh on seven months. <laughs> That's it true. It could be like that. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of intros, we just tell Baldur Gate stories. <laughs> right? So who'd you fuck this week? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, in Baldur's Gate. <laughs> Uh, we could also just do a Super Nintendo game if you want to. I guess. I mean, we don't have to. This is our show. We can do whatever True. we want. We'll see. We'll see. Let's get. Let's see what the draw is. We'll see if it's if it sounds any good to play. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> that sounds good. Let me uh, plug in this better up peripheral. <sighs> oh, it's so it. dusty. God, it's, there's mold on it. <laughs> no mold in the other part of the garage. Just back here. I don't know. Well, we're all looking around. We're all right. looking around the room like, well, where is it? Well, this is also the ground in here. The floor is level with the ground, so this does have more moisture than the other, where you can see it's a, definitely a foot higher at least. Well, plus, you're not able to leave the air running, so it gets really moist and hot yeah. in here. Sultry. So, yeah, it, it gets sultry in here. 
So that's probably what part you, of it. What did you say? It's probably more like mildew <laughs> than mold, if I had to guess. Mm. But I don't know. Is mildew mold? More of mild don't, if I'm going to have my preference. Hey. Hey. <laughs> so get my head on it, Walden Crazy Kid style. Put me on a hold run direction. Say the prayer. We all have to say. Whammies, 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 stop. The A's. F's? It is the F's. F's. Nice. F1 racing. Frantic flea. Oh, okay. I've actually heard of that. Okay. Okay. I'm okay with that. All right. Frantic, frantic flea. flea. Cool. Here we go. Well, frantic flea. Or about to get three. Or about to get three. Or, uh, yeah, we'll play some calls. You know, play a call or two. Yeah, I do. Play, we'll call play a call or two. or two. So we have time for a call or two. Yeah. Here we go. Dating all the way back to April 29th of the year of our Lord, 2022. It's Terrified Michelle. When I worked at Forest Lawn Hollywood Hills, Sinbad, Sinbad's mom came to our... Uh, Mortuary. Sinbad's mom? I didn't Two know bad moms. Work on her. Two bad moms. Uh, okay. they, they didn't like me there, and they never let me do anything regarding seeing li- the living people that were not my coworkers. And definitely not a celebrity. I probably would have shamed them because I was not good enough for them there to upper class. Yeah, not that you would have cast shame, but that you would have, they would have been ashamed. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. I feel like they've got their own show. <laughs> like they're doing their version of a podcast. This is a backdoor pilot. Only over the phone to us. Right. And so we're actually playing their show on our show. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. That's okay. It's just an observation. I don't think I don't, I my stance is that it is not okay. Where's our fucking <laughs> money? <laughs> we need to do We're not events. paying you guys. I'm sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> Shaming a person because because First they you know I was just this low class individual yeah. and they were the upper class even though some of them dressed just like me so I don't know what the fuck's going on but I guess they could take it so they made it and I could mm-hmm. yeah, I they were mean girls and I mean like the movie mean girls not just they were mean no I mean they were bitches yeah for a song. I think that was a butt dial. I don't think they realized. I think they were just having (laughs) a a conversation. conversation, Right. And that phone was on. I think you might be right. But she did say bye. (laughs) Maybe she was having a conversation (laughs) with Abby (laughs) on the way out. Yeah. (laughs) All right. I'm sorry that people were mean to you. Yeah, fuck those. Fuck, fuck those assholes. Fuck those bitches. Fuck those alpha holes. Yeah. That's what they were. Okay, guys. As you know, I've mentioned this before. I badly sing, so I read. I listen to a book, and I listen to a podcast, and catch up, and then I listen to a book, and then I listen to another podcast. Yada yada. Always listening in my car. Always in my car. Always will make time for you guys. You can but because of that, I forgot what the hell I sent you. So when you were like, I said, this, this, this package is from Tara, Scott, and Michelle, and <laughs> Executive Bruiser, Abby, I was all like, what the fuck did I send them? <laughs> I literally, and I'm telling you, Abby, what did, why do we send them? What do we send them? And of course, it's I don't know. He knows. I don't know. Oh, oh. He never I, I am fucking mortified. Mortified. <laughs> Wait, what was it? She, uh, she said that she was mortified because there was cat hair in it, I think. Oh, right? yeah. Okay, I caught okay. that. And here's what's great, terrified Michelle. I forgot what you sent us as well. It's been so long <laughs> yeah, since you've no called. Idea. No idea. That I forgot what you. So <laughs> we're either. all in the same boat. I don't remember the cat hair. I don't remember the cat yeah. hair at all. So. This might as well be an episode of Three's Company. <laughs> <laughs> we have no idea what's going on. Come and play this fucking call. <laughs> guys, want to go to the Regal Beagle? I have cat hair on everything. She, uh, she rescued our last two cats. Yeah. 
just has to get over the parody. Anyway, um, but I I know they're probably not hot because you guys are like spicy beef. Uh-huh. Um, a few of them are probably drops. Oh, sweet Lord. I mean, like, Tomatillo yeah. is amazing, but obviously mm-hmm. I got yeah. them because they were gunslinger hot sauces. Yeah, and I need them to see the cake. Right, and Tyler uh, loves the dark yes. color series. Okay. So gunslinger hot sauces. I did not go to Arizona to get those. I got them here in California. Yeah, because plus world market. Yes. Just, just so you know, like, I feel like this is equally, uh, like, a nice thing to know that, like, sometimes we just get you gifts just, you know, like, casually. Like, is isn't, that, that, isn't that equally, uh, nice? Yeah, I was. I don't, I don't yes, know. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I just think that you're, you're like part of our family. I was I was shopping for my coworkers. Yes, there are pictures of in your and, house. So yes, we are like I family. I saw that, and of course you. And I was like, well, I have to give this to Tad Pog. And then I wrapped it one billion times in my Christmas tissue paper because I think the bottles are glass, if I remember correctly, and I did not want them to break on the way over there. Okay, bye. Thank you for that. I'm sorry that we probably <laughs> threw that away. <laughs> it wasn't personal, but a bunch of food went really super bad. Or I might have eaten it, and then it just depends if it's over there on there's, that shelf or not. If it's not open, it's probably on the it shelf. It has wheels on it. I'll wheel it over. There's gunslinger. Why do we need cameras in here? Gunslinger hot sauces. Yo! There they are. All right. We've still got them. <laughs> we got them. A little dusty. They were just sitting over there by the Arizona uh, gunslinger pepper sauces. All right. Okay. Not thrown away. And we consider I'm just you, saying the odds were good. We consider you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I ate it before it was thrown away. <laughs> that one episode. That is, that is true. <laughs> yeah, you did. You did a lot of damage to your body that night. <laughs> I did constitution damage for everybody. <laughs> we we do consider you both part of our family as well. I mean, hell, hell yeah! Hell, hell yeah. yeah! I mean, hell, you take up sometimes a whole third or more of the, of the show. <laughs> so. That's that's uh, got to count for something, but that's just not enough. More. Okay, the real nice, at least for in the state of California, means that you can't have one if you're an immigrant and illegal. Um, see, in California, you can have a driver's license if you're an illegal immigrant. We didn't care because you know we're California. But it's free. We like it that way, except for the Republicans. Anyway. Um, <laughs> what are we talking about? Uh, but now, yeah. Apparently, a weed license, a, a driver's license. Oh, okay. And not having one. Apparently, you can you can have a driver's license in California if you're an illegal immigrant. Oh, okay. I'm uh, a little surprised you, by her that. phone. I think is in her purse. Yeah, it's not wherever it is. It's like Super not muffled. near her mouth. <laughs> Sorry, she's to put it in the mouth of the dead purse. person that she's embalming. So like, you <laughs> hold this for me. <laughs> Terrified Michelle, I, I gotta talk to my family. You hold this. <laughs> <laughs> Terrified Michelle, I apologize for assuming you carry a purse, but now I want to know: Do you carry a purse? You can get a driver's license, but you cannot get a real ID. You can get a police thing. I guess. It was- a Trump thing, this is what I heard it could be all wrong, and they're just trying to streamline everything, and I'm not trying to be conspiracy theorist. I, I got nothing, I man. Know. I don't know what she's saying. I heard I, point of damage and conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, like, maybe she's calling from a phone that is also a pillow. <laughs> a pillow pal phone. <laughs> maybe. Uh, the transcript reads... <laughs> Okay, the realized state of California means that you can't have one. If you're an immigrant legal in California, you can have a driver's license, your illegal immigrant week there, because you know California anyway. But no, no, yes, you can get a driver's license. Man, I love the idea of illegal immigrant week. (laughs) I should be realizing you mean I guess that's what I heard when they're just (laughs) like I'm not trying to be secure security key. (laughs) <laughs> that's it okay call call all Very right good. thanks for your call neither one of those made any sense okay <laughs> uh may 1st 2022 9 7 a.m
Hey, it's 9.07 exactly p.m. Right, right now. Shit. Okay, here's my theory. You know, in four minutes, it'll be 9.11. <laughs> um, vampires becoming more beautiful over time. Okay, so how we depicted the devil in early times, and even sometimes now, is this ugly-ass creature. But the devil is supposed to be, well, Lucifer, is supposed to be the most beautiful angel. Because most of the time, you're not going to be tempted or lured by some ugly-ass creature. You're going to be tempted and lured by a beautiful creature. I mean, someone married so, us. Thing, waka, waka, waka. Waka. <laughs> the better <laughs> thing to do it is if they're beautiful. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to let some ugly vampire or vampire girl, but she's still a vampire, but I had to distinguish just for the story, be like, hey, you want to go out with me? And then, you know, I don't know, somehow secretly bite my fucking neck. But I think you might, happening. Michelle. But I love you, but I think you might. <laughs> or if you have a really nice personality, you're that is it Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. I think that's pretty good. If, if you want to, if we're gonna roll through our intro and hit time, if you want to give us a call, you can do so two seven zero eight eight three two five five five. If you have a pillow phone, <laughs> you can try calling us from that. <laughs> Or if we'll you want to send goes. us that pillow phone, you can send that to Tadbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Purdue, Kentucky, 42001. Yes. Pl- someone please honestly send me a Garfield phone. <laughs> Some That's just a, <laughs> it's a request. I just really want one. I just can't bring myself to actually buy one. <laughs> but if someone were to buy it for me and then send it in, mm-hmm. then that would be okay. <laughs> <laughs> what about a with football you? phone? Would you accept the football phone? Got to be a Garfield phone for me, but if you want a football phone, someone send a football phone in to Ian. Tyler, what kind of phone do you want? We're picking phones. <laughs> <laughs> we're phone shopping, like for landline telephones, yeah, picking, which we will totally be able to use. <laughs> you got something in mind you want? I just, I mean, I think of the, the 90s clear phone where you could see all the electronics in it. Perfect. There you so go, there listener. Are. You got your you got your marching <laughs> orders. Garfield phone for me, football phone for Ian, clear phone for Tyler. Chop or a, chop. Or a <laughs> <laughs> post haste. Or a bag phone like Taryn had carried in a family reunion so they would know that she's better than them. <laughs> <laughs> Good shit. I don't want a bag phone. Garfield phone. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to change yours to a bag phone, that's fine. Garfield phone for me. Football phone. <laughs> for Football me. phone for Ian. A clear, lighted up on the inside phone for Tyler. Mm. Or a bag phone. Or bag your phone. pick. Or a bag phone. Okay. <laughs> Tyler can bring his bag phone into Michelle's work and make her feel sad. <laughs> <laughs> for being so fancy. So fancy. Oh, shit. What else do we do? Um, we're on all the things and all the places. Search for Tab Pog. Uh, but it's also important that you uh, w- taste the piss. Taste well. We're not doctors. This is not medical <laughs> advice. <laughs> but yes, you can taste the piss dot com if you want mm-hmm. to. And if you taste the piss <laughs> and you like it, and want to become an official an official piss drinker, an epistle, an epis. That's God <laughs> damn it! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> Fuck! <laughs> What episode is this? 300 something? <laughs> Got it in 300. <laughs> it's like 727. Oh, Got it man. in 700 something. Whew. Yeah, it's not even the half life of the show. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're at, we're, we're rapidly oh, approaching man. 800. <laughs> 300 was like fucking. F- oh, shit, that was a different life. F zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to look it up while you finish it. I want to know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, what's uh, what's that Patreon? Patreon is a platform mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. which people that like drink want piss to give money. <laughs> what year to- was it? <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I just <laughs> want to say Webster's Dictionary defines Patreon <laughs> as. Kind of watch show Joe. <laughs> oh, okay. So that was all right. Fuck, I've been listening to this show a long time because I remember that. Uh, so it was right. That was right before um, Melissa and I got together. Mm-hmm. Okay, 
back to the important stuff. Uh, Patreon.com slash Tadpog or PissTasters.com is where you can go if you would like to donate money to the show. And we have lots of generous donors. We have lots of people who just give us their money because they like what we do. And I cannot tell you how utterly appreciative we are of that. Yes. Every single time I get that money yeah. at the beginning of the month, I am. I think about every one of you and think, thank you, thank you, thank you, because it really helps us out, helps the show, helps us in our personal lives. Yes. It's awesome. It and, does. Uh, it 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 makes a difference. So thank you, thank you. <laughs> we do have a list of our executive producers. I which... do. I do want to say something though before you get into it, if you don't mind, and that is um, that when you get me the Garfield phone and Ian the football phone, and Tyler the clear phone. <laughs> That's right. I looked away. I looked away to stop you from from. That made it funnier. (laughs) That made it funnier because I saw you about to laugh, and then you look away suddenly, and I'm like, "Fuck!" There I go. I'm sorry. I tried. I tried. No, no, that's on me, man. That's on me. That's not on you. That's on me. But my point is, if you get me the Garfield phone and Ian the football phone and Tyler the clear phone, please don't lower your donation because we also need that money. No, that's extra. <laughs> You're just giving us yeah, that. This is a gift. <laughs> this is a gift just because you might happen to have that football phone that you don't want anymore <laughs> yeah. laying around. Yeah. Did you laugh once while you listened to this episode? If you do, you owe me a Garfield phone, Ian a football phone, and Tyler a clear phone. Or a bag phone. Or a bag phone. Or a bag phone. phone. Just be careful shipping that bag phone because that battery is probably going to explode. <laughs> yeah. Just lie to the post office like I do every time. Like, Are there batteries in this? Not at all. <laughs> uh, post office jet crashed into rural <laughs> Chicago <laughs> land today. Yeah, that was a joke, by the way. I've never, I've never done that. <laughs> this is a comedy podcast. Well, that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, now yeah, on we own the, every on, video game we play on this show. <laughs> onto the list of executive producers. These are the folks that donate twenty dollars a month, a month or more to the show, and we are going to read your names right here because you just matter that much to us. Starting with Usurper Graham. Cousin David Galino, Plinko Nick Price, Cubicle Monkey, Cthusius Jeff Miners, Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link, Joseph Phillips, Gamebug Prime Nathan Eaton, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G. Ooh, my mouse flicked on me. There she is. Louisville Correspondent, Princess Consuela, Banana Hammock, Flavor Trick, Taryn Dahl. Congratulations on your marriage, and thank you for all the fine, awesome Louisville facts. She's been corresponding the fuck out of our Discord at tastethepiss.com. God, I know. I know. I love it. Pinball, Airplane, Archmage, Chris Edler, we're sorry you couldn't be on this episode. Platinum member, Brett Miller. Sandwich Pope, Phil Hawkins. Nate from Utah, first-time caller. Drink Smith, Joey Webster, Dig Dougie, Derek Pope Sandwich, and Cody Phillips. Thank you so much for your generous donations. Yes. We just, again, that it goes a long way. It helps. Um, and if you would like to get in on the conversation with us, you can do that at tastethepiss.com. Uh, that is our Discord. It's free, and um, we just we hang out there all the time. There's always some good dis- good discussion going on, not just about the show, but about all the cool things we're into and the things we like to talk about and do. Oh, and also um, before I forget, thank you to Backlog Banisher Dane for putting the show on YouTube. Yeah, dude. Uh, thanks a lot for that, my thank man. Thank you. Uh, it's super cool of you to do that. And uh, because you do that, you are excused from getting us. Me a Garfield phone, Ian a football phone, and Tyler Cliff. Yeah, you're, so you're you, you don't please don't do that. Not I'm just talking to Dane. <laughs> or do I don't if Dane? If you want to do it, you can. Don't listen to him. Listen All right, that's to me. fine. That's fair. That's fair. It's up to you. In fact, Dane, you, now this is your responsibility. <laughs> Find someone to buy us these phones. The eyes on the Garfield phone have to work. Oh, it all has to work. Every (laughs) single bit of this has to work. (laughs) We will not accept Garfield phones that do not 
yeah. open and close their eyes when the phone yeah. receiver oh, is picked up. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> how, ugh. Yeah, how could you even say such a thing? Return to sender. Yeah, 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 yeah. We will ask the post office to screen the package <laughs> to make sure it is working before they bother to bring it. They here. will do they it. Do that. It's an expensive feature, but they will do it. <laughs> Just keep an eye out. <laughs> <laughs> Scan every package that comes through. If it happens to have a Garfield phone in it, we need you to inspect it. They agree to do this. Also draw Garfield on the package as if the box itself is Garfield. Uh, okay, This is yes. important. That way the post office knows what package to look for. Yarn. <laughs> lots and lots of yarn. Orange and black yarn on the outside that matches Garfield's fur pattern they love that they so do. when you say garfield phone i think of the one of him loafing laying down that's the one i'm thinking right of there's another well. one where he's standing up holy shit i am so glad you brought this up <laughs> do not send me a phone with garfield standing never up. never garfield loaf is the way to go with yes. the yes. eyes that open yes. yeah oh can i see the one with him standing up do you have that handy Oh, that's oh! A, that is an abomination. Fuck that mm-hmm. no that is an abomination. It's also half the price, so don't don't skim. don't cheap out. <laughs> so you could buy you could buy Dave the the loaf Garfield phone. I'm so glad you brought that up for just four interest free payments of thirty two fifty. Perfect. Oh my God. That's nothing. <laughs> No, that is cheap. That is a no, value. No, I'm saying, oh my God, because like I can't believe that a priceless heirloom would cost so little. <laughs> I agree. Yes. <laughs> uh, what about an ESPN football phone, Tyler? What is? What are those going for? Let's see. Now, is this the football that is a loaf or the football that is standing? <laughs> <laughs> the loaf one. Oh, okay. Uh, and also, this phone was made available with free with purchase of a one-year <laughs> oh subscription God. of Sports, Sports Illustrated. Illustrated. I remember that. I said ESPN, but it's Sports Illustrated. Holy shit. Man, they used to run those fucking ads. I know. Me, like, and I lot. wanted yeah. one. Oh, man. I wanted one real bad, and I never got one. <laughs> Sports <laughs> Illustrated football phone, not ESPN, Tyler. <laughs> Oh, Sports Illustrated. Best thing is ESPN isn't isn't yielding no results. Yeah, Sports Illustrated football phone. I I I misspoke a minute ago. That doesn't come through on the recording. Just FYI. <laughs> Substantially cheaper. Yes. As it should be. So for because it's not as elite or as cool as the Garfield. Definitely phone. not as elite or cool as the Garfield phone. Unless you're me and. <laughs> it's the better choice, then it's more elite and cool than the Garfield phone, Dave. Because it is a it is a flip phone. So the whole football is the phone, is what I'm seeing. Can we see this? Let me see it. Yeah. I thought it had a, a thing in like the cradle. Like a cradle, cradle. yeah. Like, right? like Garfield's back. I don't know that that's... That's the, the only one I'm seeing. Maybe that's it. No, maybe that... Yeah, I think that might be it. There, are, You can swipe, right? So for the low price of twenty eight dollars plus ten dollars shipping, oh, damn, that's a fucking you could steal. buy in. I'm not buying this. One of you has to buy it for me, right? That is the deal. All our wives have banned us buying any more novelty phones. We purchased too many of them in our lives. They're taking up too much space in all of our spare rooms. The only way we can get these phones is if somebody gifts them to us. Yep. And for me, <laughs> the vintage 90s landline light up clear phone, I love $25 it. free shipping on eBay. So go ahead and knock out mine and Tyler's <laughs> first, and then you can get to Dave's whenever you want. That's fine. He'll just have, that's what he gets for picking the more expensive choice. I didn't know it was the most expensive one. It makes well, sense that it is. If you have to ask. You can't afford it. You can't it. afford it. So that don't is worry. true. You, know, you, you like what you like. Yeah, th- that is true. That is true. And the loaf Garfield phone that opens his <laughs> eyes when you pick up the cradle is, or the handset out of the cradle is pretty fucking cool. It's choice. If you have the means, I recommend <laughs> it. I highly recommend it. <laughs> uh, oh, here oh. is one that mounts to the wall. Fuck he's got that. his claws no. out no. like he's shredding a No. <laughs> Loaf. It's, it's, made, it's made by Tyco. That is cute, but loaf. Because <laughs> loaf, loaf is cheaper than the than the, the scratchy other. one, and so is the the price 
varies wildly because where I saw <laughs> that was from Mercari. This is on eBay. So here is one, the 81 Tycho Garfield loaf phone, $48. And here's another 78. God damn it, I'm going to buy this shit. $150. No. <laughs> no. no, I prohibit you from buying it. You have to get it as a gift we, from a listener. It's too, we started looking at eBay's open. It can't be helped now. <laughs> Really, really, Dave needs to own the triumvirate of the three Garfield style Because <laughs> <laughs> every person in his family needs their own Garfield No, phone. no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to arrange them like War of the Magi. Like. <laughs> <laughs> War of the Tried in Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be in my office space. <laughs> no one will appreciate it, but, but, but us. It'll be our, it'll be our thing. <laughs> Then we have to get like pixel art, six, you know, bit renderings of us, like for Final <laughs> Fantasy characters. Of course. Right. But we're like Kefka at the end. We're just like a, a, a amalgamation of the three of us. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Our theme song is Moves. So I'll sing more drive. We'll do that track from the shorts at tadbog.com. How you guys want to close it out? As our favorite. As our song. favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Me as a Garfield phone, Ian as a football phone, and Tyler as a clear phone. If I yes. knew our P.O. box, I'd give it to you again right now, but I don't know it. <laughs> Ten bucks to you is care for Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Duke, Kentucky, 4201. Bye, Swans. So until next time, <laughs> Tropical, Tropical Capricorn. Capricorn. Like a 90s girl. Yeah, that was good. That was good. Football announcer. Yeah. I was Josh Nance. <laughs> He's the most Garfield out of all of us. <laughs>you can you, you can get us these you can make this happen yeah you can because you care enough to get us this high on the charts right we're charting we're charting thanks to you it can only get better if you send us the garfield phone for dave <laughs> the football phone for me in the 90s light up clear phone for tyler if you live in bulgaria and you meet our demands <laughs> And provide me a Garfield phone, Ian a football phone, and Tyler a clear phone. We will individually call you from those phones. <laughs> yep. In, yep. In Bulgaria. Yep. Throw this some Miak in there, too. I'd my, like to try it. <laughs> <laughs> this is my promise to you. <laughs> that's that's a, a a Dave Moore promise is a guarantee. <laughs> like, I would I would I would gamble money on a Dave Moore promise. Make make it happen. Thanks. So to be clear, <laughs> just no, to make I sure you clear. understand. Yeah, no, I do feel like we do need to make it clear. We want. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we want someone <laughs> to send us from Bulgaria. From Bulgaria. <laughs> A Garfield loaf <laughs> phone, a loaf Garfield that the eyes open when you lift the headset out of the cradle. Yes. A limited edition Sports Illustrated classic football phone for me. Yes. My name's Ian. That's correct. <laughs> and a clear plastic see-through light-up 90s style phone mm -hmm. for Tyler. Mm-hmm. I think that I think you got it. That's it. Okay. Did I leave anything out? These have to be American phones. You can't buy Bulgarian versions of these phones. <laughs> no I don't even know if they were fucking knockoffs. <laughs> right. <laughs> 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 don't you can't 3D print this either. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll know. I've seen what the 3D printed guns do. I don't want that to happen with Garfield's face. We will know. <laughs> yes, we will. Illustrate bless. <laughs> <laughs>